following is a presentation of the IH Sports Network. High school basketball is on the air. The Oneida Indians, the Scott Highlanders, with Tim Smith, Rick Keaton, and their entire broadcast teams. Sponsored by Twin K, Ray Zach's, Mark's Family Pharmacy, Stand, Baby J's Pizza, El Rey, South Fork Physical Therapy, Tommy's Motorsports, Mountain People's Health Councils, and First National Bank. Produced by the IH Sports Network, high school basketball begins now. Good evening and welcome to Gatlinburg, Tennessee and Gatlinburg Pittman High School for tonight's game on the IH Sports Network. This is the Baby J's Pizza pregame report and it's the Oneida Lady Indians on the road here as they take on the Gatlinburg Pittman Lady Highlanders. This is Kevin Akers. Joining me here uh, in a little bit will be Bo Kidd and the voice of the Indians, Tim Smith. Lady Indians come in tonight with an overall record of 7-2. and two. Of course, this is a their second district game. Uh, they are 1-0 in the district, 2A. The Lady Highlanders of Gatlinburg-Pittman are also 9-2. They are 2-0 in the district. Uh, Gatlinburg-Pittman Lady Highlanders are considered a not only a chance to get to Murfreesboro, but a chance to win the whole thing this year. So this is going to be a good uh, test for the Lady Indians, be a good measuring stick. Bo's going to come in and catch us up to date on the Roarks uh, scouting report and a much much more as we come from Gatlinburg Pittman for tonight's contest is Lady Indians and the Highlanders coming up right after this. Welcome back to Gatlinburg Pittman High School the Lady Indians and the Lady Highlanders coming up here in just a few minutes joining me now Bo Kidd on the Roarks Pharmacy Scouting Report. Roarks Pharmacy, shaped by the unique community we serve. Bo? Gatlinburg Pittman's ladies come into this ball game with an overall record of eight and two on the season. They are two and, or excuse me, uh, technically nine and two, I apologize. Two and oh uh, in district play uh, this year. Their two losses at Sevier County by 20, 62 to 42. Uh, also a loss to number two ranked McMinn Central. McMinn Central, by the way, uh, so Gatlinburg's ladies last year qualified. They went to the state. Correct. They won their district. They lost two regular season games to Alcoa, came back and beat Alcoa in the district and the region. Yep. Won their sectional game and went to the state and matched up against McMinn Central, and that's who bounced them. McMinn Central is the state's runner-up last year in 2A. Correct. So Did I jump in? I'm sorry. No, 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 <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, giving great info there. Of course, already some wins, uh, some big wins this year. Uh, that very first game of the season, everybody circled that game with GP at York in the Hall of Fame game. Oh, yeah. An absolute battle right off the bat, a 64-62 to win for GP in overtime at, at York. Oh, that is a very, very impressive win. They've got a lot of talent out here on the floor, only three seniors this year, uh, including a missed, uh, a missed basketball from last year. Uh, you talked about her uh, during the break earlier, Maddie Newman. Uh, they do have a few injuries, though, that they are working with right now. Uh, number 10, Nyla Burns. She was the region tournament MVP last year as a freshman. She is a sophomore this year. That is the young lady that we saw tonight with the club, with the big uh, cast on her arm. She has a broken bone in her hand. Two, three weeks is what they said. Will's she's got been her out, out there. Yep. She's been out of uh, action. She just came back uh, last week in the or earlier this week in the game against Seymour. So, and then also another injury uh, that we will not see playing tonight, she is actually in street clothes on the side, is number 23, the sophomore Malia Glasper. She will not be playing tonight. She's got an injury as well. So uh, we should see, uh, you know, we're still going to see plenty of talent on the floor. And we're going to see Gallagher plenty of Pittman. Glasper later you're on. See a lot, you're going to see enough of the Glaspers <laughs> later on, yes, as you'll see uh, big brother Ty Glasper out on the floor for the boys as well. All right, we're going to take a break. When we return, we'll have the Helenwood Foods out-of-town scoreboard coming up on the IH Sports Network.
Welcome back to Gatlinburg in the Baby J's Pizza pregame report. It's now time for our Helenwood Foods out-of-town scoreboard. What have we got at Helenwood Foods this week? Oh, well, you heard about it Tuesday. And uh, getting ready for the new year, they've got that smoked hog jaw, $4.99 a pound. Uh, just get you some kraut and black-eyed peas. Black-eyed peas, yeah. And you'll be ready to go. I didn't know kraut was part of it. Yes. Come okay. on, Kevin. Well, I've never and won. you did know every black eyed pea you eat is a dollar you're going to earn in the year. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't know that either. There you go. Learn a lot. <laughs> also at Hillwood Foods, chicken tenders are three ninety nine a pound. Both. I'll eat those. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's take a look at the out of town score tonight. A lot of games happened last night. Uh, not as much going on tonight, but some very good games going on tonight uh, around the area. Of course, we start off actually in the same district, Alcoa. We'll be hosting Knox Webb tonight in the Five Star Preps Classic. Uh, also, Morristown West is going to be at Jefferson County. Sevier County will be at Morristown East. Uh, also, Cosby takes a trip to Cock County. Maryville will, will be at Fulton tonight. A very unique setup right there, Maryville and Fulton. Uh, Maryville's girls only 2-7 and seven on the year. Fulton's girls 1-8. and eight. That is unusual. Very, very unusual to see that start to the season. Uh, for both of those teams. Also, Jellico will be at Oliver Springs tonight. Uh, Pigeon Forward just traveling over to Seymour this evening. Eagleton is at Sunbright. 9-0 and Sunbright. Sunbright. 9-0 and Sunbright. The State girls. ranked, did somebody yeah. tell me? Yes. State ranked, and top they, 10. Yeah. What about the Sunbright Lady Tigers? Got out of that district just in time, didn't we? Coldfield, <laughs> Coldfield will be I over. <laughs> I mean, I've had stirred up. Sitting right here, you don't say that sitting right here. Not uh, like it's any better here. Yeah. Uh, Coalfield is at Wartburg tonight. Clinton is traveling over to Anderson County. Uh, and then routing it out will be Harriman at Rockwood. And then Farragut will be taking on a William Blunt team that we will see on Tuesday. Thank you both for that. And that was the Helenwood Foods out of town scoreboard. We're going to take a break. When we return, we'll have the. McDonald's starting lineup and the opening tip. It's the Oneida Lady Indians and the Gatlinburg Pittman Lady Highlanders here on the IH Sports Network. Welcome back to Gatlinburg. We're getting set for the national anthem. And I'll go ahead and give it to the voice of the Indians, Tim Smith. All right. We won't interrupt that once it gets started. But uh, when we found out we were going to be in this district last year, this was kind of the first things that we thought about. Playing Gatlinburg Pittman at Gatlinburg Pittman. Two powerful teams. Well, now they're trying to match up tonight, and here we go. Now, for the play of the National Anthem. What about that? That's one of the coolest things I've ever experienced in a ball game. <laughs> Second time that's happened to me now. Really? Couldn't <laughs> get the national anthem to go, and the crowd fills in. That was a nice moment here at Gatlinburg-Pittman to get things started off, and we're ready for Friday night basketball on the 
IH Sports Network. Don't forget, you can watch wrestling and our basketball game if you go to the IHSports.net page. I know a lot of people are interested in that first wrestling tonight for the Highlanders, so remember, you can watch them both. You don't have to choose one or the other. Starting lineups for the visiting Oneida Lady Indians. And Oneida in the road, orange uniforms, white numerals trimmed in black. And starting tonight for Oneida, you'll know them by heart. Rayleigh Bush is back, the senior guard. Grace Shoemaker, the senior guard. Analia Terry, the senior forward. Ellie West, the sophomore guard. And Larissa Jones, a sophomore forward. Now for the Gatlinburg Pittman Lady Highlanders on the McDonald's of Oneida starting lineups. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. And starting for Gatlinburg Pittman tonight, number 11, a senior, Leah Stennett. Number 12, a sophomore, Addie Ware. Number 14, a junior, Gracie Valentine. Number 30, that senior, there she is, Maddie Newman. And uh, number 32, senior, Trinity Whaley. Gatlinburg in the home white uniforms. Blue numerals trimmed in gold as we're set to go. We leave the Baby J's Pizza pregame report and head into the first quarter. You see the Twin K scoreboard is up and ready to go. And we'll see what that's going to look like. Oneida would probably prefer a low scoring output here tonight. Gatlinburg may want to get out and run, but it's going to be Larissa Jones to tip it against Maddie Newman as we're set to go with high school basketball, District 2A basketball from Gatlinburg, and the Lady Highlanders control things. Leah Stennett at the point. Onana's going to open man-to-man, -man, and Larissa Jones will be tasked with guarding Newman as Gatlinburg works around the perimeter. And then the loft to the corner. Here's going to be a three-pointer up from Leah Stennett. No good. Rebound off of Ellie West out of bounds. The difference, as you move to 2A, you got to have some depth, and you can't have any scoring droughts. No, absolutely not. So the inbounds is to Ware, and now back here driving through. Stinnett gets a bounce feed out to Valentine. Back to Stinnett. Good defense early by Onada. They're going to lob it down, though, to Newman. Newman can't get the shot to fall first try. Second try won't go. She just kind of slumps and walks away after that second one, but then it's going to be a near steal as Grace Shoemaker recovers, gets it to Rayleigh Bush, and now Onada's in front court with a chance to try to score and maybe take a lead here in Gatlinburg empty middle of the floor against this 2-3 zone as Grace Shoemaker turns and gets it back out to Rayleigh Bush. Bush going to drive all the way through, loops it off the glass. Good to put Onada on the board first. Rayleigh Bush with the bucket, and Onada leads 2 to nothing. and the Lady Indians are going to press. 2-2-1, two, two, full court press, and this is going to be Ware. Ware cross court to Stennett. Stennett on the drive all the way through, going to be fouled on the way to the basket, and that for Onada will be their first foul in the game. And it's going to be against Larissa Jones. Yeah, Jones picks up her first right there. Something, if you're if you're Onada and you're Coach West, you gotta you gotta force feed it to Larissa. Make sure to keep them feet planted. Just plant the feet. Try to draw the charge if at all possible. Stennett at the free throw line, connects on the first with 6:53. You see on the clock on the Twin K scoreboard, and she connects on the second. We're tied. Now Onada against some full court pressure from the Lady Highlanders, and here's a pass that's going to be intercepted by Valentine. Valentine drives down, kicks it over to Newman. Newman, free throw line, and now driving through, it's going to be ooh, a reach-in foul against the Lady Indians. Must have gotten the basketball there. Grace Shoemaker will pick up the second foul for the Lady Indians. Remember, five fouls, and the other team shoots two free throws. Now on the baseline, this is going to be Ware. Ware back out to Stennett. Stennett will circle back out high. We played a minute and a half, tied at two here in Gatlinburg. Stennett with the dish over to Ware. Pass to the wing. Now there's the post up down low. Turning shot is up and good for Maddie Newman, and Gatlinburg has the lead, four to two. Now in rear court against pressure, it's going to be Jones ahead to Ellie West. West dribbles, goes cross court, and finds Grace Shoemaker. Onada breaks the press. Here's Shoemaker driving through, kicking out Ellie West for three. In and out, no good. Rebound to the floor. Kept alive by Jones. Loose on the basketball floor. It's going to be picked up by Ware in transition. She goes over to Whaley. Whaley off the glass, no good. Rebound is going to be tipped, and it's Newman. Back up, no good. Rebound, Newman again with it. Letting him play down low. Kicks it out. Stennett for three. Good. Stennett knocks down the three-pointer, and Gatlinburg has a 7-2 lead. Extra chance for Gatlinburg. Can't let that happen. 
They'll hurt you with it. And now Oneida turns it over in the pressure in rear court. It's going to be Stinnett. Bounce feed down Newman. Shot good, and she's fouled. And Coach Marv West will probably want a timeout here in just a moment. That's the third foul for Oneida. And there is the timeout. We'll take the break with your score, Gatlinburg 9, Oneida 2. Welcome back to Gatlinburg. Maddie Newman steps to the line as Onada comes out of a 30-second timeout. The free throw from Newman is good, and Gatlinburg has gone on a 10-0 run after Onada scored that first basket. Mahela Martin will check in here for Grace Shoemaker, and Onada will try to work up against this Gatlinburg pressure. Terry in rear court, back over to Bush. Rayleigh lobs it ahead. Larissa Jones makes a tough catch, but then it's going to be thrown away, and it's going to be Valentine. Back the other way. Now they hit Newman. Newman to the corner. Stinnett fakes the three. Dishes down to Newman. Turning. Loses the handle on it. Mahela Martin comes up with it. In transition, ahead she goes to Rayleigh Bush. Bush, the only two for Oneida, goes to Jones for a two, and it's good. Oneida gets a second bucket and cuts it to six here and puts the pressure back on Gatlinburg in rear court. Now crossing over, it's going to be Whaley. Now they work it around to the left corner, off the knee, and out of bounds a turnover as Onada speeds up Gatlinburg. Addie Ware turns it over. You heard both say uh, that they have a starter out tonight, and it may be that Ware is the person in in that place. Uh, and now Onada down six with the basketball in rear court. Terry looking back to Ellie West. West across midcourt. Ooh. They're going to say she turned it over as Newman was providing the pressure. <clears throat> Had she not shot away from Newman there, she might have drawn a foul. Yeah. But I understand Newman is an impressive, uh, imposing yes, presence out there on the court. So now Stennett's going to drive to her right. Off a pick from Newman who rolls to the basket. Then Stennett comes through, coming over to late. And we're going to have a foul and against Oneida, and we're going to have a free throw on the made bucket. That for Oneida is four fouls. So any more fouls with 4.31 to play in the first quarter, any more fouls, and – Gatlinburg goes to the line to shoot two. So at the line, Stinnett. She hit a three from long range earlier, trying a three-point play here from the line, knocks it down, and Gatlinburg now has the 13-4 lead, a nine-point edge. Here's Ellie West in rear court, turning, looking, firing ahead. It's going to be turned over. Stinnett comes up with a loose basketball, ahead to Ware. Ware down to Whaley for the lay-in good. And Gatlinburg is starting to feel it and try to run away from the Lady Indians. It's a double-digit lead. 15-4 to four is the score halfway through this first quarter. That's a lot of points in yes, less than half is. a quarter as Ellie West drives down and gets it to Analia Terry. Terry out top called for the double dribble here on the pressure provided by Newman. So she's not just an offensive scoring threat. No. Uh, she could play some defense too. Uh, young lady's an all-around player. Stennett will bring it the other way for Gatlinburg Pittman, coached by Katie Moore. They were state tournament participants a year ago, lost to the eventual state runner-up, McMinn Central. Now they drive to the baseline, kick it to Newman. Newman banks it up there. Nice defense by Larissa Jones. Then as she is descended upon on the rebound, she's going to be fouled, I think, by Whaley. That is going to be... The first foul against Gatlinburg. And Leah Terry will bring it forward for the Lady Indians. Into front court. She looks for someone to pass to. It's deflected. She gets the bounce feed to Rayleigh Bush. Bush to Mahela Martin as she goes to the basket. It's deflected out of bounds by Gracie Valentine. It's an 11-point lead here on the road for Gatlinburg Pittman with 3.28 to play in the first quarter. Onada will work it in from the baseline. Rayleigh Bush. Looking for somebody to pop open and trying to get it into Larissa Jones, and it's going to be out. They're going to say Jones clipped it last. Newman pointed that way, and they let her sort make the call. Sort of went with it. <laughs> so it's going to be Stinnett to bring it the other way. Stinnett into front court with the basketball, working to her left. Now in the paint, popping open. It's knocked away by Analia Terry. It goes out of bounds, and and it's going to be Oneida basketball, so they kind of evened it up there. Yeah. I think Analia clipped that last. Those things usually pan out. With 3.13 to play in the first quarter, Oneida brings it in to West. Now Martin ahead to Rayleigh Bush, down to Analia Terry. 
She puts it on the floor. Skip pass over to Ellie West. Three minutes, first quarter, Onada down 11. Here at Gatlinburg, Martin with the basketball, turns. Back to Ellie Newman guarding her out high. Ellie goes past her into the paint, puts the shot up there, no good. Battle for the rebound, Newman comes up with it. And now she gets airborne, fires it ahead to Stinnett. Stinnett to the basket, shot is good. And she's fouled by the back pedaling Larissa Jones. That'll be two on Larissa now. And she'll have to go to the sidelines. So that is five fouls on the Lady Indians. Any more fouls in this 244? And it will be two free throws for Gatlinburg. Here is a free throw. Stennett misses this one, but it's going to be recycled. New entry into the game, Chloe Mejias. Mejias shoots from the right wing. It's going to be short. Rebound battled for. Mahela Martin trying to get control of it. Mejias battles back to it. Newman to the basket. It rolls good. Maddie Newman makes it a 15-point game. And now Ellie West in rear court, fires it over. Newman's going to get the steal. She'll take it to the basket for the lay-in. And Maddie Newman comes up with it, and Onada takes another timeout. We'll take the same. Your score, 216 first quarter. It's Gatlinburg 21 and Onada 4. Welcome back to Gatlinburg. Onada out of their second timeout of the quarter. Down by 17 here on the road. It's going to be Analia Terry with the bounce feed. Martin out to Ellie West for three. Good. Ellie knocks down the three-pointer for the Lady Indians. And it's a two-touchdown lead now for the Highlanders, Lady Highlanders of Gatlinburg-Pittman. Here's Stinnett driving through. Mejias. Mejias kicks it out. A three-pointer from where? Rolls around. No good. Rebound. Ellie West. So Oneida. We'll bring it forward now. West down to the left side. Martin drives the baseline. Her pass deflected. She saves it into Rayleigh Bush for two. Rattles no good. Rebound pulled in Mejias. Mejias looking down court. Wants to fire it to Ware. The passing lane wasn't there. She finds Stinnett. Stinnett, now they work it to Ware in the left corner. Posting low. We're going to have a bumping foul on McKenna Terry, who's into the game for the Lady Indians. And that will put Ellie Rowland at the line for two free throws because that is the sixth team foul this quarter for Onada. See the Twin K scoreboard, Onada with three timeouts left. Here's a free throw. Gatlinburg has been very good at knocking these down. What are they from the line, Bo? Missed one? I think they missed one. Yep. They stuck with it. 23 to seven. Lady Highlanders in the lead here comfortably on their court. Now Terry is going to bring it forward, dribbles through the pressure, gets to Ellie West, and finds Rayleigh Bush. Bush, as we tick down to the minute mark of the first quarter, fires left side West. West works to her right. Oh, a little bit of, little little bit of a moving pick. Onada gets away with there. And now Martin drives in, running one-hander is up, no good. Rebound is Mejias. Chloe Mejias brings it across midcourt, fires it, and it's going to be tipped by Rayleigh Bush, stolen by Ellie West. West brings it into front court with Onada down 16, looking for help, fires across and finds Rayleigh Bush for three. Rattles, won't go, rebound. This is gonna be Stinnett. Stinnett makes this team go, driving coast to coast, fouled on the floor here by Ellie West, and Stinnett will go to the line for two free throws, where she's been very good. She's got their only miss, uh, but she's been very good from the free throw line. What's she got in the early going, Bo? Uh, Stinnett already on the ball game. Uh, okay, there she is. I'm sorry, 10 points on three of four shooting, three of three from the line. Make that four of four from the line. Stennett with 11 points in the first quarter. She's impressive directing traffic, running this team, and knocking down free throws. 25 to 7. Not many holes in the game of Stennett. We haven't seen any, by the way. I guess she missed one shot, if you want to consider that. If that's a hole. Yeah, if that's what that is. And the turnover now by the Indians. Yep, Lady Indians turn it over in transition. It's an 18-point game with 24 and a half seconds to play in the first quarter. <coughs> and Whaley's going to bring it in to Ware's. Ware, excuse me. Ware with it on the left wing. Looking in, posting down low. That's Roland. Now Ware's going to fire the three. It's going to go long. Rebound McKenna Terry. Comes down with it, secures it nicely. 
Mejia wanted to take it away. McKenna didn't let her. And now Ellie West gets into the front court. And here's Rayleigh Bush back to West at the last second shot. Rattles, no good. And that's the end of the first quarter of play. We take the break. Your score, it is Gatlinburg 25 on out of seven. Welcome back to Gatlinburg. Twin K scoreboard shows you an 18-point lead for the homestanding Lady Highlanders, Bo. How'd they do it? Uh, on eight of 17 shooting, uh, one of four from three, uh, or, excuse me, six of seven from the free throw line, but they've already got ten rebounds to Oneida's is four. So starting the second half, Newman, Ware, Whaley, Valentine, and Stinnett for Gatlinburg. For Oneida, Grace Shoemaker, Kennedy Shoemaker, Cameron Stiltner, who's shooting a three here. It's going to be off, along with Larissa Jones with two fouls and McKenna Terry. Now in transition, this is going to be Stinnett down court. Whaley works it around. It's going to be Valentine for three. It's going to be short rebound. Larissa Jones boxes her out, and we're going to have a foul from behind here on Gatlinburg. Just their second foul of the contest. Okay, I'm messing those up. Here we have a steal, and back the other way, Newman lays it off the glass. Good. It's my first time working fouls. You're going to have to stick <laughs> with me here. I'll get to it. 27-7. to seven. Now a 20-point lead for Gatlinburg. Onada across to Stiltner. Stiltner has it poked away. Newman got a paw in there on it, and now it's going to be stolen away by Whaley. Whaley will bring it back the other way. Newman, shot won't go, rebound. Stiltner battling for it. Newman goes to the floor, saves it over to Ware. They work it around the perimeter. Valentine to the corner. Whaley for three. It's good. That is Trinity Whaley. And now back the other way. Got an idea. We'll try that. Did we get a reset on the fouls? It's Kennedy Shoemaker has it knocked away here. No. Stinnett takes it the other way, lays it up. Good. My goodness. 7-0 run to start now. The second quarter, Lady Indians struggling to get the ball, honestly, across the timeline. Back the other way. This is going to be Grace Shoemaker with the basketball. Nice drive. Dishes it across and finds Kennedy Shoemaker. Shoemaker to Stiltner. Stiltner's pass. She's going to be fouled. That'll be the second foul on Gatlinburg. <laughs> so now Onada will bring it inside front court. Stiltner to work the ball inbounds. Gets it in to Larissa Jones, guarded by Whaley. Jones has it knocked away here by Valentine. Back to Whaley. Out ahead, Ware. And then she finds Newman streaking to the basket for the lay-in. And Gatlinburg is up 34-7 to here. 27-point lead for the homestanding Lady Highlanders. Grace Shoemaker works here against Valentine. Driving, picking it up. Needs help here. Bounce feed. Larissa Jones comes to the rescue. Driving down under. Lost it across, tried to get it to Kennedy Shoemaker, and Onada turns it over. And on that turnover, Onada will get Analia Terry, Rayleigh Bush, and Ellie West back out on the floor. So, again, one of the other big things is the depth when you move to 2A. Now, these teams are, are going to be deeper, and, uh, and Onada is experiencing a little bit of that here uh, in the early going of the second quarter. Working out of a zone now. This is going to be Valentine from the left corner. Lost it over to Ware. And now to the right corner. It's a three-pointer up and short. Battle for the rebound. And it's going to be Whaley. Back up, no good. Rebound, tipped around. Wow, that was physical. And that was a foul on Gatlinburg. Uh, picking up their third this quarter. It's kind of a headlock on Analia Terry. I'm sure Analia completely innocent. She hasn't. Yeah, absolutely. She hasn't mixed it up with no, anybody. No, never. Gatlinburg backing off the full court pressure here, as Onada will bring it forward inside five minutes to play man-to-man -man defense from Gatlinburg here in this first half. Rayleigh Bush picks it up, 
Goes to Terry, who hands it off to Grace Shoemaker. Shoemaker, free throw line, backing in. Back to Rayleigh Bush from the elbow to Larissa Jones. She'll attack the paint, running one-hander, banks no good. Larissa keeping it alive, battling for it, and a blocking foul. She and Whaley almost, almost so similar here, Bo. Uh, Whaley and Larissa Jones going all out all the time. That's a foul. That's Larissa's third. third. Uh, but they play a similar game. Going that, that basketball is theirs, and they won't be denied. Absolutely. 34 to 7. Gatlinburg with the lead and the basketball now. Front court posting down low. There is Roland. Ball is loose. It's going to be picked up by Grace Shoemaker. She'll turn and bring it into front court. Shoemaker from the left wing, a little hesitation. Now driving down, turns and looks, kicks it out west. Around to Rayleigh Bush, who gets an open look. It's going to be no good. Battle for the rebound. Mahela Martin challenging, but it's going to be Cheyenne Bird who comes away with it. Bird, a freshman, that's number 24 out there, and that's her with the basketball on the left wing. Bird with the bounce feed into Newman. It's going to be tied up by Analia Terry. Jump ball will keep it with Gatlinburg here. Halfway through the second quarter, Onada down 27 here on the road against the Lady Highlanders. State participants in 2A a year ago. It's fired into Valentine for a three that is good. Gracie Valentine knocks this one down, and it's a 30-point lead now for the Lady Highlanders of Gatlinburg. Pass deflected out of bounds by Newman. And Stennett will return to the floor along with Chloe Mejias for Gatlinburg. Valentine and Ware will exit. Lonata with the basketball. And it's going to be Mahala Martin. Ball knocked away. There's your fourth foul this quarter on Gatlinburg. This one's Stennett, I think. Yes. And so any more fouls this quarter, and Onada will shoot two free throws. Have we scored this quarter, Bo? No. 12-0 run. That's what I thought. So Grace Shoemaker with the basketball, driving left, kicks it out. Rayleigh Bush, a good look. It's going to be good. Rayleigh Bush knocks down the three-pointer for the Lady Indians. You asked him, shall or see? 37 to 10, back the other way, Stennett. Oneida in this extended, looks like a 3-2 uh, zone. Maybe a 1-2-2. Yeah. They can look similar. And now here's a three-pointer up and good. Gatlinburg with the answer. Chloe Mejias back the other way. It's going to be West to Shoemaker. And now Terry. And now it's going to be Bush driving all the way through. The running one-hander no good. Battles for the rebound, but it's going to be taken away by Mahias in transition. Her bounce feet ahead to Stennett, who drives the baseline, circling through, kicking out to the freshman. They circle it around. Mahias down to Newman, turning shot. Banks rolls off no good. Grace Shoemaker battling for the rebound, as is Analia Terry. She gets to Rayleigh Bush. Down court, Mahela Martin wants to attack the paint. Then her pass is deflected. Newman tips it to teammate wow. Roland, who finds Stennett. Stennett's bounce feet stolen away by Ellie West. West in a triple team now, looks over and finds Analia Terry. Onada down 30, but with the basketball here, and this is going to be Shoemaker. Down on the baseline, circling back out with the basketball. It's going to be Terry. Analia guarded by Newman here. And then gets tied up on that wing. It's going to travel with it. Cameron Stiltner is going to check in for Onada. Mahala Martin will exit. 2-11 first quarter. Gatlinburg here at home with a 40 to 10 lead in district play against the Lady Indians. Addie Ware returns to the floor and Leah Stennett, the senior point guard will bring it into front court. Over to Mejias on the left side. Mejias to the corner, Ware looking in, new entry into the game here is Reese Ownby. They're emptying out that bench for Gatlinburg right now, getting everybody some playing time, but here's Stennett, another look at the three and it's good. And it's 43 to 10. Lady Highlanders with a minute 35 here in the first half. It's going to be Rayleigh Bush. The three pointer won't fall. Gatlinburg boxes nicely. Mejias to Stennett in transition. Stennett slows, gives to the trailing Mejias. They'll circle it around. Ware makes the catch, dumps it down to Newman for the layup off the glass. Good. 
Gatlinburg with a 35-point lead. Just over a minute to play first half. Rayleigh Bush kicks to the corner. Ellie West gets a look at the three. Good. West knocks down the three-pointer for Oneida as we hit the minute mark. You see the twin K scoreboard. And uh, we weren't kidding when we told you about this Gatlinburg team in the pregame. You can see that now. Newman down in the paint. Kicks it out to Ware for three, and it's good. And uh, Gatlinburg is feeling good, looking good. Playing good. And Bo Bo knew they would. (laughs) Back the other way, Rayleigh Bush. Here's Shoemaker to Ellie West for three. Good. Oneida less hesitation on the shots right now, and that seems to be a good thing. Ellie's got back-to-back threes here in this first half, and now it's going to be... Down in the corner, Mejias rips the pass across. Ware for three. Going to be long, but there's Mejias on the backside. Rebound, puts it back up. No good. Rebound. Rayleigh Bush says, this is mine, and then she's fouled. And that will put her at the line at the other end for two free throws with 9.9 seconds in the first half. So, Rayleigh, a chance to cut this to 30 just prior to halftime. And... We will have boys action following this. By the way, their boys can play as well. Yes, they can. They won't be the favorite in the district since the defending state champ resides in Alcoa, and they're in the district as well. The first free throw from Rayleigh is good. But they're pretty good. Yeah. Second toss from Rayleigh Bush is good. And Onada cuts it back down to 30 here in the early going. Puts on a little pressure here with seven seconds, trying to slow Gatlinburg down, not give him a good shot. Stinnett drives, though, and finds the basket. And that will do it. We go to halftime, and the Vantage Point Financial Halftime Report is next. Here on the IH Sports Network, your halftime score is Gatlinburg 50 and Oneida 18. Welcome to the Vantage Point Financial Halftime Report. And it finds the Lady Highlanders leading the Lady Indians by a score of 50 to 18 with our first half statistics. Mo Kidd. Gentlemen, Oneida finishes the first half. Excuse me, Gatlinburg Pittman finishes the first half. 18 of 33 from the floor for 54.5%, 6 of 12 from the uh, from deep for 50%. And they were uh, 5 of 6. From the, or excuse me, no, eight of nine, I apologize. Eight of nine from the free throw line. Uh, they were led the first half by Leah Stennett. 19 points, three steals in the first half. And then Maddie Newman follows her. 15 points, four rebounds, and three assists, three steals in just 12 minutes of play in the first half. Also three points from Addie Ware. Uh, three points from Gracie Valentine. Five points from Trinity Whaley. Three points, seven rebounds from Chloe Mejias off the bench, and two points and a rebound from Ellie Rowland as well. Uh, Just seven seven turnovers in the first half from Gatlinburg Pittman, but had ten steals in the first half. For Oneida, just six of 18 from the field for 33%, four of ten from three, two of two from the free throw line. They were led in the first half by Ellie West. She had nine points and a rebound to go with two steals in the first half. Seven points, two rebounds, and two assists for Rayleigh Bush. The only other Lady Indian in the scorebooks in the first half was Larissa Jones. She had two points to go along with three rebounds, but three fouls as well in the first half. The Lady Indian, 16 turnovers in the first half of play and only four steals uh, in that first half as well. Uh, This is a team, gentlemen, we talked about it. They are very good. We've not seen any, honestly, we've not really seen any holes Mm-mm. here in the first half from a, from a Lady Highlanders. Not at all. They look, they look sharp. We're going to take a break, and on the other side of this break, we will have the Helenwood Foods out-of-town scoreboard here on the IH Sports Network. Welcome back to the Vantage Point Financial Halftime Report. Vantage Point Financial, able will help you with all your Planning needs for retirement, 401k plans, and all of that uh, located on the four lane there in Oneida. 
It's now time for a Helenwood Foods out of town scoreboard. Helenwood Foods this week has smoked hog gels, $4.99 a pound, and also chicken tenders for $3.99 a pound this week at Helenwood Foods. Bo? Couple of uh, scores in so far here this evening. Sevier County leading Morristown East 19 to 18 at the half. Also, McMinn Central uh, down at Meigs County. McMinn Central 34 to 7 leading Meigs at the half. That's the only other scores uh, thus far on the Hello Foods. Well, we got the scoreboard. six o'clock start. That Morristown Correct. East, uh, Sevier County. Those are juggernauts. Yes, yes they are. And so. for it to be a 19 18 uh, game at the half, either is a a lot of good defense or somebody's not making some baskets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take another break. When we return, we'll have the second half of this one. It's the Lady Indians 18, the Lady Highlanders 50 here on the IH Sports Network. Welcome back to action. It is second half action. Onada opens with possession of the basketball. And it's going to be stolen away here by Stennett. All the way down, Stennett runs into defense, kicks it out to Ware. Ware can't get the shot to go, and it trickles out of bounds. So it will be. Gatlinburg to bring it in. Fouls go across the game, so those are correct. There's three. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, timeouts <laughs> uh, go across the game. So there's three for Onada. Here's the bounce feed in. Newman makes the catch in traffic, then drives to her left, banks Man. it up there, and gets it to go. Just powerful. Maddie Newman. Just powerful down on the block. Makes it 52-18. to 18. Onada back the other way with the basketball. Grace Shoemaker, Larissa Jones, Analia Terry, Ellie West, and Rayleigh Bush for Onada to start the second half. And for Gatlinburg, you heard already, uh, Maddie Newman is out there along with Leah Stennett, Addie Ware, Gracie Valentine, and Whaley, Trinity Whaley. Here's an Onada turnover, 644, third quarter. Gatlinburg with a 34-point lead right now. So the rule on that, Kevin, if you go to the fourth quarter, and the lead is? Well, we thought 30, but the other night they did 35. 35. So. I think it's 35. Yeah. yeah, 35 or greater. Here's Newman with the jumper, no good. Backside rebound, Whaley turns, gets the bounce feed to Valentine. Long three from Stinnett. And a no good, but a long rebound, and Larissa Jones comes away with it. Fires it to Rayleigh Bush. Ellie West in front court. Bush had a look at it. Now backs down free throw line into the paint, kicks it out. Grace Shoemaker for three. Going to bounce off the iron, no good. Rebound, Matty Newman. We played two minutes of the third quarter, and here's Stennett to the basket for the lay-in. Good. And Onada will bring it back the other way after that score. The bounce feed to Larissa Jones. She puts it up and pops it in good. Larissa gets the two to go and cuts it back down to 34. So here's Gatlinburg bringing it the other way. And it's a three-pointer up, no good. Rebound is going to be Ellie West. West will bring it up the left side. Herself gets it over to Rayleigh Bush, guarded by Whaley. Bush drives past Whaley and a reach-in foul on Gatlinburg here as Rayleigh goes on the drive. So if you're Coach West, you're just looking for some positive things here in this third quarter. Uh, a win seems to be out of the question, but improvement from what you saw first half. You you took in the uh, the best that Gatlinburg had to offer. Oh, they're saying she was shooting. Yes. On that, so the first one's good for Rayleigh. And you pack this away, and you know you're going to have Gatlinburg again down the road, uh, and you can measure your success when they come to Oneida on January the 5th and see if you've had improvement from then, from now to then. Well, he also said the other night, uh, Tim, that he was wanting to see them not come up here and just, you know, pack it in to fight throughout this whole game. And I'm sure he's still one of those guys here and fight and get after it. So a 33-point game. And we'll see what happens in this third quarter. Uh, that's what we'll watch for as this is going to be Mejias to Whaley to the cutter. And Roland gets it back to Whaley, back to Roland. That's nice. Nicely done, Mejias to Whaley for the lay-in. 
And now back the other way, this is going to be Rayleigh Bush. Ware guarding her. Bush goes to the corner. Mahala Martin. Martin back out to Ellie West. West on the drive on the baseline. Foul on the way to the basket is going to be the call. Looks like it will go against Ellie Rowland, the junior. Speaking of juniors, Hayden Brawner is not one. <laughs> I apologize for that's that. That's been that's been announced a couple of times, a lot more than a couple of times through uh, through our first few games. But Hayden Brawner is a senior. Let the record show. So uh, they said they told us since Mark's not here, we could blame Mark for that, and we are not above doing that. There's the second shot from Ellie West from the free throw line. It's good. I'm sorry, from Rayleigh Bush. It's good. And now back the other way. It is Gatlinburg with the basketball. Ware to the corner. Mejias. Whaley off of her foot to the corner. She saves it. Now needs help. Throws it off of the foot of Larissa Jones. Ellie West has it. Then it's going to be Whaley taking it back away to Mejias for the jumper. No good. Whaley flies in and gets the rebound. Well, not have position, but couldn't pull it down in that situation. Now back the other way. This is going to be Martin. And now Stiltner with the basketball down in the corner. Needs some help. Going to be called for a double dribble here. And we're going to have substitution into the game for Gatlinburg and Cheyenne Bird. Halfway through the third quarter, it is a 36-point lead for the Lady Highlanders. Boys action to follow, and the Gatlinburg-Pittman boys are as good as advertised. advertised. That's right. Uh, much like this girls' team, as Larissa Jones is going to pick up a foul here to prevent a lay-in. Larissa's fourth foul. Comes with 3.41 to play in the third quarter. At the line, two tosses. The first one is no good for Ellie Rowland. Here comes McKenna Terry, Kennedy Shoemaker, Larissa Jones, and Ellie West will exit. Ellie Rowland will have a second free throw here for Gatlinburg Pittman. This one's on the way. It's good. And now Rayleigh Bush will bring it the other way for the Lady Indians. Cameron Stiltner. Stiltner on the drive, down through, kicks it back out. Kennedy Shoemaker to Rayleigh Bush for three. Glances the iron, no good. Rebound, falls to the paint, and it's going to be picked up on the run by Mejias. Mejias to the left corner, Ware wide open for three, and it's good. And I'd have lost Ware in transition, and now it's a 40-point game. Kennedy Shoemaker running the other way, makes the catch, but they're going to say she took steps on the way to the basket as Onada tried to push the tempo forward with 3.15 to play in the third quarter. And now Stennett will bring it the other way for Gatlinburg-Pittman. Ware, skip pass, nice look, Mejias. Puts up the three, no good. Rebound, Rayleigh Bush comes away with it. And now we'll bring it forward for the Lady Indians. Pass ahead to Stiltner, down to Kennedy Shoemaker, who backs up for a three that glances the iron, no good. Rebound rolling to Mejias. Mejias sees... Stennett streaking back the other way. Onata gets to her, and Stennett then is going to be fouled on a block here by the Lady Indians. I think that's a second-team foul for Onata in this quarter. And we will see Leah Stennett to the free throw line and a pair of tosses from her. The first one is good. Maddie Newman was a missed basketball, uh, but uh, Leah Stennett, I don't know, can you have – I, I would vote for two from one team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She she can play. Certainly like a conductor of a symphony as she directs this Gatlinburg attack. Stennett, outstanding. Now here's Martin driving through. It's going to be tipped away and stolen. And now Stennett again in transition. Fires it over. The lay-in is going to be good. And a foul is going to be assessed on Oneida. The lay-in... Well, I don't have a 22. I don't though. either. Let's see. Who have we not called? It could. Be, I don't think it's Annie Ogle, but maybe. And the rebound is going to be McKenna Terry back over to Stiltner. 
The foul is on Oneida there, and now Oneida turns it over, bringing it up court. Returning to the floor will be Valentine. Stennett will exit. So now directing the point, Chloe Mejias to Valentine. Free throw line. This is going to be Cheyenne Bird, freshman. Mejias. She'll be the heir apparent, it looks like, to stint it. And now with the basketball, Gatlinburg works around, and it's going to be a two-pointer up, no good from Bird. Rebound taken by Valentine. Inside two minutes to play in the third quarter. Mejias will redirect traffic. She's a sophomore and the backup point guard. That is Gabriella Cameron. Gabriella Cameron. Do we have that on ours? We do not. All right. Gabriella Cameron takes a three. It's no good. Rebound is going to be Mahala Martin. She'll look to Rayleigh Bush. Minute and a half in the third. Onada down 44. Stiltner driving through, tied up on the baseline, and going to turn it over here. And it will go back to Gatlinburg. Onada will return Larissa Jones, Grace Shoemaker, and Aaliyah Terry. Now Mejias will bring it down court for Gatlinburg. Not been many nights like this no. for Coach Marv West and his Lady Indians. As this layup for Reese Ownby is good. But it is a welcome to 2A from a state contending 2A team here on their home court tonight. As the foul is against Gatlinburg. Went against Mejias. Thank you. West will bring it into Analia Terry. Now Stiltner tipped into rear court by Mejias. Stiltner gets it back to West. A minute to go, third quarter. West looking. Fires over to Analia Terry. Back to West. Ellie with the bounce feed. Stiltner on the baseline. Driving through to the free throw line. Leaves it out with Shoemaker. 45 seconds, Shoemaker's bounce feed. Larissa Jones shot good, and she's fouled. And the foul will be against Mejias. And Larissa Jones will stand in for the free throw. It's on the way, and good. 68-25. Down court, it's going to be turned over by Gatlinburg here. They lead by 43 with 38 seconds remaining in the third. Onada will get it back. Following the conclusion of the game, we'll have a play of the game. We'll have a hustle award, and we'll have a player of the game. First National Bank player of the game, Trophy Masters Hustle Award. Little's Drugs brings you the play of the game. Stiltner with the basketball, and it's going to be a turnover here. Gatlinburg comes up with the loose basketball with 20 seconds to play third quarter. And now into front court, Mejias. Mejias trying to get room. Driving to her right. Now back to her left on the wing, looking in. Fires it down in the paint, popping open. Then, then kicking it back out. Bird, they're working around the perimeter. Valentine, will they get a shot off? It's Mejias for three. No good. Into the third, or into the third. Yes, we'll take the break. We'll be back. Going into the fourth, it's Gatlinburg 68 on out of 25. Welcome back. Fourth quarter. The clock will run continuously. Onada starts the fourth down 43 points here at Gatlinburg. 68-25. You see it on the Twin K scoreboard. And the Lady Indians, Rayleigh Bush on the drive. Loft it back out to Ellie West. Gatlinburg started the quarter with a turnover. Now the bounce feed. Larissa Jones shot no good, but she draws the foul from the Lady Highlanders. And it will be Larissa Jones to the line. Lady Indians' next action will be Tuesday, William Blunt's Lady Governors, which, so is it, I guess they call themselves the Lady the Governors. Lady Govs. But there have been, lady, there's Lady been Govs. governors that are ladies, yeah. so why do you have to add that now? I don't know. In this Great day question. and age. Kevin, that's got to be something Kevin would be on, on top of. I'll Back give the you other way. Back the other way. Oh, my goodness. Here is a 
lay-in that makes it 70. Oh, I've missed, I've missed a point. My mistake. 70 to 26. And this is going to be Analia Terry to Rayleigh Bush. Driving the baseline. Shot won't go. Battle for the rebound. Newman and Jones going at it. And it's going to be Gatlinburg out of there with it. Stand it into front court. Dumping it in. Newman. Newman spinning. Puts the shot up and called for the charge. Larissa Jones had position. Newman charges into her. You just wonder if that would have been the whistle had this been different uh, in the outcome that we're looking at right now. Don't know. Speculation. Kevin surely doesn't know. He's looking at his phone. He gets on to other people for that. Look at him. Rayleigh Bush will bring it the other way with 5.50 to go. Now down to Mahala Martin. Martin, nice drive. Oh. oh, couldn't get the shot to go, but there for the rebound, Rayleigh Bush. Back up, no good. Rebound tipped around, and now it's going to be Stinnett out down the right side. Stinnett will circle out to her left, out high. Bounce feed. It's going to go down, and now they get it to Newman. Newman trying to loop it down to Whaley. It's tapped out. Ware comes up with it. You see the clock rolling here on that twin K scoreboard. Gatlinburg going to remain undefeated in the district as Rayleigh Bush provides the defense. Down court, they get it to Ellie West. West for the layup, good. And that may be your Littles Drugs play of the game. That was a nice rebound for Rayleigh and a push the other way. Well, let's take another look at that play, see what you think about it. Or yep. perhaps we will not. Time I didn't out. get that one. So it's a timeout with 5.07 to play. I thought I did. But apparently I hit the wrong button. Yes, I did. Well, we can all up our game a little bit here tonight, can't we? Yes, sir. <laughs> Anyhow, what I was researching on my phone is what I can tell, they're called the governors as well. They don't have a ladies in front of their name. Okay. So, William Blunt, governors. Governors. Two sets of governors. Mm -hmm. Kevin Wendell coaches the, boys the latter set, and that's who on not his boys will play. So, Kevin Wendell teammate of Jacob Kings back in the day, and they will square off in Anderson County. The Highlander teams will be there from Scott High. Clark Anderson Rains County will, will be, be there. Clark Jordan. Rains, yep. It's going to be an interesting tournament down in Clinton starting Tuesday night. Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning, yeah. yeah. Morning. Gentlemen are playing at 11.15 uh, a.m. <laughs> So, Chloe Mejias with the basketball now for Gatlinburg. Picks it up out top. Gets the bounce feed here to Ombi. And now, Gabriella. Forgot the last name. Cameron. Cameron? Cameron. Cameron. Thank yeah. you. And now, it's going to be Stiltner driving. Couldn't get the shot to go. Rebound, Ombi. Back down court. This is going to be Cheyenne Bird. They reverse it around. Cameron. For three, no good. Backside, Mejias has the shot blocked by Stiltner. And now in transition, Onada gets it back to Markham for the three. Couldn't get the shot to fall. We're halfway through the fourth quarter. Onada trailing 70 to 28 with a running clock here in Gatlinburg. The Lady Highlanders continuing district dominance as they have had thus far. They will have a showdown with Alcoa in the coming month. Not this month. Kennedy Shoemaker gets it out ahead to Mahala Martin. Martin to the basket for the layup. Good. Three and a half to go. 70 to 30. Still a 40-point contest, and it's going to be Gatlinburg the other way with it. Boys action coming up next from here on the mountain at Gatlinburg. Most people enjoy Gatlinburg this time of year. I don't think our teams are having, or at least our ladies team not having much fun here no, tonight. No, no, no. Tough, tough Gatlinburg team. Absolutely. Mejias with the two and the one makes it 71 to 30. And now Stiltner will bring it the other way. Crossing over, driving down baseline, puts the shot up, and they're going to say she was fouled on the floor. And that's 
two fouls on Gatlinburg here. With that clock rolling, I don't think we're going to see anybody hit the five foul mark. I'd venture to say not. Now Stiltner will bring it in from the baseline for the Lady Indians. Lobbing it in, trying to get it to McKenna Terry. Went too far, but Mahala Martin is there to clean it up. Back to Stiltner. On the drive to the right, Cameron finds a nice backdoor cut from Kennedy Shoemaker. Couldn't get the shot to fall, but she'll go to the line for two shots. That's what you like to see. Lots of times you'll see those kids uh, take a dribble on something like that. Yep. As soon as you get it, she put that thing up there. She did a good job on that. And you can be assured that uh, – Onada's coaches, Marv West, Devlin Markham, Jason Pike, that's one of the areas they've been focusing on. Going to try to compete at this level, and uh, those are things you can't do anymore. Here comes Amy Jolu Allen, Avery Rector, and uh, Faith Mitchell into the ballgame. Go to church with Faith Mitchell. Cheyenne Bird will bring it the other way. Cameron on the wing with a minute 15 to play. Now Mejia's bounce feed low, and Markham defending down low, knocks it away from Roland. And we'll hit the minute mark here, and Gatlinburg with the bounce feed in. Mejia's keeps possession, gets it out there, and driving through for a two, no good. Markham might have blocked that attempt from Bird, and now Lexi will bring it into front court. Bounce feed for Lexi. Back to Amy Jo Llewellyn. Llewellyn drives, puts the shot up no good. Rebound tip. Mejias has it. Mejias over to Cameron to the trailing Ownby. And now Bird to Cameron to the corner. Gatlinburg working on the perimeter here with 20 seconds to play. Coach Katie Moore and her team going to pick up their 10th win of the season. Ten seconds away from it as they will dispatch uh, the Lady Indians by 41 here unless there is a score here. Rector on the drive. She's going to put a shot up. Avery Rector's shot glances no good, and this one goes final. So, Stay tuned. The Danny King Lumber postgame report is coming up from Gatlinburg as we tell you the final score in this one. It is the Lady Highlanders of Gatlinburg 73, Oneida 32. And welcome back to Gatlinburg in the Danny King Lumber postgame report. Danny King Lumber located down on Verdun. They have wholesale and retail lumber. With our final game statistics, Bo Kidd. Let's take a look at Gatlinburg Pittman, gentlemen. 27 to 58 from the floor for 46 and a half percent. 7 of 21 from three for 33 percent. 12 of 13 from the free throw line tonight. They were led on the evening by Leah Stennett. 7 of 12 from the floor. She finished with 23 points, five steals, three rebounds. Also, Maddie Newman, 17 points, seven rebounds, four assists on the night. Nine points, three rebounds from Trinity Whaley. Six points and five assists from Addie Ware. Three points for Gracie Valentine. Uh, Chloe Mejia is off the bench. Six points, 11 rebounds, four assists in the game. Also two points for Gabriella Cameron, two for Reese Ownby, and five points for Ellie Rowland. Uh, 12 steals on the night for Gatlinburg Pittman, just 11 turnovers in the game. For the Indians, or for the Lady Indians, excuse me, 10 of 32 from the floor for the night for 31%, 4 of 14 from 3 for 28%, 8 of 11 from the free throw line for 72, almost 73%. They were led on the night by Ellie West. She had thir or, excuse me, 12 points to go along with a pair of rebounds and two steals. Also 5 points, eight, or, eight, excuse me, 8 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists from Rayleigh Bush. Also 8 points from Larissa Jones, 2 points from Kennedy Shoemaker, and two points from Mahala Martin. Lady Indians, 24 turnovers in the game, just four steals in the game, and the first game this year that Rayleigh Bush has played in that she did not have a steal in the game. Wow. Okay. All right, thank you for that, Bo. Now it's going to take us straight into our superlatives for tonight's game. Uh, we'll start off with our play of the game from Little's Drugs. Here it is. 
It was the opening bucket that put Onada up two to nothing. Rayleigh Bush. So Onada got a defensive stop on the first play, and Indians, Lady Indians, had a short lead here yep. tonight. Led, led, led Lady Highlanders. They a lot of teams can say they did that this year. No, so, there's not. <laughs> so. Uh, there's your Little Drugs play of the game. So next is our Trophy Masters Hustle Award. Trophy Masters, of course, located on Main Street in Oneida. Bo? Trophy Masters Hustle Award winner tonight is Rayleigh Bush. Coming off that ankle injury uh, earlier this week, once again, finished tonight. Eight points, five rebounds, two, or excuse me, four assists in the game in 22 minutes play. Rayleigh Bush, your Trophy Masters Hustle Award winner. And thank you for that. Now that leads us up to our first National Bank player of the game tonight. First National Bank member, FDIC. Bo? First National Bank player of the game is number 24, Ellie West. Ellie on, a, on the night, four of seven from the floor, three of five from deep in the, the night with 12 points, two rebounds, and two steals in the game. Ellie West, your first National Bank player of the game. All right, thank you, sir. That's going to do it here for our Danny King Lumber post game report. Danny King Lumber, wholesale. Lumber, uh, retail lumber, located down on Verdun. Got great people, great prices. Uh, contact them down there for all your lumber needs. We're going ahead and take a break here in Gatlinburg. When we return, we'll be back with our uh, Baby J's Pizza pregame report. It's now time for the men to come up. It's the Oneida Indians and the Gatlinburg Pittman Highlanders on the IH Sports Network. Welcome to Gatlinburg Pittman High School and the Baby J's Pizza pregame report. The Oneida Indians taking on the Gatlinburg Pittman Highlanders. Oneida comes into the night's game with an overall record of eight and one. Gatlinburg Pittman is eight and two, and in the district, Oneida is one and zero. Oh. This is Gatlinburg Pittman's. No, I'm sorry, I looked that wrong. They are two and zero. Oh. So both of them undefeated in district play coming into tonight, gentlemen. Uh, so this is going to be a good one. Uh, apologize, we skipped over. Let's go ahead and grab that real quick. The Helenwood Foods out of town scoreboard, Bo, as I let you pull that up and get ready for that. Uh, Helenwood Foods this week uh, has smoked hog jowls. Not just regular hog jowls, but smoked hog jowls for $4.99 a pound. Uh, get that for New Year's. And also, uh, they have chicken tenders, $3.99 a pound at Helenwood Foods. Bo? Uh, Let's see here. It's it's slowly loading them up. At halftime, we've got Cloudland leading Hampton 22 to 17. Once again, the final here tonight uh, for Gatlinburg Pittman defeating Oneida 73 to 32. Uh, also, second quarter action: Cock County leading Cosby 18 to 10. McMinn Central leading Meigs County. Once again, that's still a halftime score: 34 to 7. Oliver Springs leads Jellico uh, at the half 20 to 11, and then Monterey leading Midway. Uh, at the half, 30 to 22. Midway six and three. Monterey just two and six entering tonight's game with an eight-point lead over the Lady Waves. Wow. Okay, thank you for that. Once again, that's our Helenwood Foods out of town scoreboard, and that's going to move us right into our Roarch Pharmacy scattering report. Roarch Pharmacy. Uh, I can't remember. Shape my unique. Shape my unique community, sir. I'm having to do it tonight <laughs> without a script. Uh, so, Bo, uh, give us a scouting report on the Gatlinburg Pittman Highlanders. Gatlinburg Pittman, once again, eight and two coming into tonight's game. Uh, two and zero in district play. They are unbeaten here uh, at home tonight. Uh, of course, in their home gymnasium, four and zero on the season. Uh, their losses on the season came against number one ranked Fulton in a Thanksgiving Classic back on Friday, November the 24th, 77 to 68. Also, a 10-point loss at Sevier County, 66 to 56. Two names you will hear a lot of this evening from the Gatlinburg Pittman Highlanders, and that is number 10, Ty Glasper, and number two, Carlos Orr. Two big-time names here at Gatlinburg Pittman. Of course, Mr. Glasper, uh, Definitely has a number of uh, people looking at him for the next year. He's just a junior. Uh, Mr. Orr, number two, actually had his signing this morning. Mm. He's going to be traveling up north for some Division I football. He signed with the University of Illinois this morning. Wow. So uh, definitely an athlete on the floor uh, for Gatlinburg P Pittman. Uh, you will hear those two names tremendously throughout the night. All righty, and before we go to break, 
I've been wanting to work this in. This is a good time. <laughs> Lucas, Lucas Laxton is on the uh, camera now. Will King had it for the girls' game. Luke, you would zoom in down there on the right around the foul line. I'm sure a lot of people have been looking at home wondering, what in the world is that? Is the paint coming off the floor or whatever? That is the city limits of Gatlinburg on that one. And if you'll come around to the other side, a lot of people don't realize this school actually serves two cities here in the area. Municipalities, I would go with. Yeah, municipalities, yeah. And that is Pittman. That is the city uh, outline of Pittman Center. So it's Gatlinburg and Pittman. That's where, of course, the name obviously comes from. A lot of people forget about the Pittman part. A lot of times just think it's just Gatlinburg High School. Uh, so we was able to put our Internet skills together and found out exactly what that was. So that's kind of cool. We will take a break. <laughs> we were the only ones who probably think that. <laughs> we're going to take a break here. And uh, when we return, we'll have the McDonald's starting lineups and the opening tip. It's the Gatlinburg Pittman Highlanders and your Oneida Indians coming up here on the IH Sports Network. Welcome back to Gatlinburg Pittman High School. This is our final broadcast of 2023, unless something strange happens. Uh, but we've got our slate full for January, where we will have seven games, four at home, three on the road. We'll have Gatlinburg Pittman at home on the 5th of January. We travel to Austin East and Pigeon Forge on the 9th and the 12th. Alcoa comes in on the 16th. Oliver Springs on the 19th. Eagleton is our destination on the 23rd of January, and then Pigeon Forge comes to Oneida on January 26th. So four home games, three road dates in the month of January, weather permitting. Well, All three of those road games is places you've never been before, right? That's correct. I was going to say, I don't remember. And you got I've, the, you I've got been the, to Austin East, but not to the not, gym. Not to the gym. Yeah. And then, of course, remember, I don't know if what's on the schedule or not, but the January the 20th game, that's a Saturday game. I didn't know if that was on the schedule or not. So. Not on this one I've got. Gotcha. Is that Campbell that's County? That's the Campbell County game, yes. That's that makeup game. All right, the McDonald's of Oneida starting lineups. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Mm, yes. Okay, so for the visitors, Oneida in the road orange with white numerals trimmed in gray. Tonight, the sophomore, Jagan Morgan, starts at guard. The senior, Mason Keaton, at guard. The sophomore, Grady Keaton, at guard. The forward, Gavin Keaton, he's a senior. And at center, senior, Hayden Brauner. Uh, let us be clear on that. That's your McDonald's of Oneida starting lineup for the Oneida Indians and your McDonald's of Oneida starting lineup for the Gatlinburg Pittman Highlanders. And you got a very special guest you may want to introduce. It's going to help uh, us out. Are you hanging night. around? It's, spe it's special. Oh, oh, you know what? There you go. There it's you special go. the words you want to say after that. You can <laughs> stand, sit, whatever. Uh, I've got a lot of words I'd be calling myself right now. Coach Marv West with the starters for Gatlinburg are uh, Carlos Orr. He's a senior. You heard both say he signed for football with Illinois. Mason Harris is a senior forward. Ty Glasper, junior, dropped 60 last, not this past Tuesday, but the Tuesday before. Wade Whaley, uh, who has a, uh, we understand his father is ill, and they didn't know if he would start, but Wade Whaley is here tonight, the junior. And then Cam Richardson, the senior. And uh, Coach Marv West, the Lady Highlanders, every bit as good as they every were built to be. Every bit as good as I thought they were. Um, until you play teams like that, that play fast, play hard, that are intense. You can explain to the kids all you want. Now now that we've seen that, hopefully it'll wake some of them up. So, and, and uh, this boys team should be just as good. I'll be honest, I've not seen them play. I, I know I've heard about a couple of their kids. Uh, one of them's the Division One football player. Yeah. Which That's one is or, right He's on number or. two. That's Mason Keaton. Misses from the elbow here to start things off. Now Glasper will bring it down court. He's the one that had 60 a uh, week and a half ago. First shot won't go. Morgan with the basketball. He'll bring it in transition up the right side. And then Gavin Keat. Grady is going to just try to play through this meniscus issue. But now Gatlinburg gets the steal, and they will lay it up and in. That's Wade Whaley. It gives Gatlinburg the early lead, two to nothing here, one minute in. Onada will work against this full court pressure. Grady's shot blocked. 
by Orr. He's out ahead to Whaley. Looking down to Richardson. Now Glasper will back it up here. Well, not a man-to-man -man defensively here. Drawing the defensive assignment of Glasper, Mason Keaton. Now Richardson, and we're going to have a reach-in foul. It's going to be called on Oneida. I mean, it's Gavin. You, you confirm that's a foul? I didn't know what one was the first few minutes of our game, I'll say that. <laughs> Here's the inbounds, and a hook shot up and good for Mason Harris. And Gatlinburg grabs an early four to nothing lead. We did have as our play of the game in the girls game, you all grabbed the early lead here. Not many teams lead the Lady Highlanders, so there you go. I forgot that team. Yes, I should have put that on my positives at the end of the game when I was talking to them. You should have. Grady. Well, yes. Against these teams, and what you, what you saw that kind of with the, the shot Grady took the possession before, if you're not getting a wide open look, it's not a good look then. Let's run some offense. You know, we we spent the whole first half on the other end of the of the floor. We didn't have much possession. All. I'd love to see a time of possession, you know, something like that Ooh. for that because we would come down when we did break the press, we would jack a quick shot. Let me ask you though, uh, as a point of strategy, I'm not in a 1-3-1, one, one, looks like here now mixing it up against Gatlinburg. So, uh Open shots come so rarely against these teams that are so good, though. Do you Can you really afford to pass up when you actually get an open look? Well, I mean, it's a tough if, spot, If you're right? a player shooting 20%, it's not, still not a good look if it's open. You know what I mean? If you're right. shooting 20% from three for the year, why are you shooting, you know, you can't shoot 10 shots a game. Foul was on Bronner, and, and I believe. I'm sure, sure that's no, what. Grady. The, Grady. Oh, gotcha. Sorry. I'm sure that's what the kids are thinking. You know, and it is. It's it, it's so different because you go from playing some of the teams we've played who right. we can get away with that stuff with. Foul on Orr. And that will be his first. Renata brings it in. They find Bronner. Bronner finds Grady Keaton. And he finds the basket. For the Indians, makes it a one-point game, 535 and ticking in the first quarter. Great play, look at, you know, kicking it to the middle to Bronner and then seeing Grady on the sideline right there. Glasper's three, won't find the net. And now Bronner. Is this a foul? Is this a tie-up? Call a foul. They're going to call a foul. All right. So Gatlinburg, that is their third team foul. Yep, and that's on Harris. That's his second. And Caden Rector will check in for Jagan Morgan. So you, you have a quick turnaround the next time you play Gatlinburg. It's going to be January the 5th. Um, but, I mean, this is a team that yeah, it's got, yeah, it's, that uh, played in the state tournament last year in 2A. I mean, it's, it's probably uh, the yeah. best team in the district, right? Oh, yeah. It, it, you know. I know Alcoa is going to be really good too, but yes. they didn't have as much coming back as GP had. Uh, oh wow! But you know, you can look at their wall over there. There, there, there's a tradition here. This one's out of bounds. Touch last, they say Oneida. A little physical down in the paint uh, between these two teams right now. The 5-11 in the first quarter. Working from the baseline, Glasper will bring it in. They set a screen. Brauner gets out there on him. Glasper travels. Oh, oh we call no. a foul. Could be a foul on the Indians there. And that's Grady's second. All right. So it will be. So Grady staying in with two. Glasper looking to work the ball inbounds. And he fires it out to Whaley. Back to Glasper in the corner. Fakes the three. Steps in for the two. Shot won't well, go, tip. but the tip is good from Mason Harris. Bronner doing a good job on Glasper out there, though. Well, not a down three. You, you just can't give good teams second, third shots, and sometimes fourth shots, you know. So defensively, you tried some different things tonight. What do you feel like went well? I mean, when we were 
when we were where we were supposed to be, there were some good things. But I have a lot of kids that just don't get it right now, that don't have a lot of varsity experience, that are being thrown to the wolves, what? That, that just are out of position a lot, and it's, it's hurting us. Glasper fouled on his way to the basket. That's his first two, I think. And he'll have a free throw coming with it. It is. Foul was called against Lindbergh as well. Makes it a five-point game. Orr checks back in, 4.34 in the first quarter. Toss from Glasper is good here. So it's a six-point lead and full-court pressure from Gatlinburg. This is Glasper working against Keaton. Running, Get some help running with jump. Triple trio yeah. of Three defenders. people oh, on. Oh, there's him. a foul. And that's where, you know, you'd like to see a step back before you get to the to the half line yeah. and, and read the, the defense. But but notice there's a lot of kids. My man's leaving, but we're standing here just throwing our arm up. Well, Mason can't see you. Same thing. You know, we do a lot of that same stuff. Good luck. Oh. oh. Nice look to get it in to Bronner. Lots of times that first layup from Bronner doesn't go uh, for some reason. Usually the rest of them will. Now uh, Glasper for three out top. Won't go. Rebound. That was like the rebound drill you do to box out everybody that fell to the floor, but now Anata turns it over. Glasper's going to take it up well. against Keaton, but he traveled first. You can see he did not agree. Well, that's the second time he's traveled. The first time they call a foul. That is correct. Timeout requested. Uh, Onada will take the same. Halfway through the first, we take the break with your score. It is Gatlinburg 10, Onada 4. Welcome back to Gatlinburg. The Twin K scoreboard had to make some repairs to it there when you're doing it all. You know. <laughs> Halfway through the first Quarter, Gatlinburg calls the timeout with a six-point lead. What do you think that's about? Just sloppy. I mean, even though they're up like that, you know, the walk of a couple, you know, just silly plays. Well, Shed Moore, the coach for Gatlinburg. And now Oneida will bring it forward down six. We're in the second half of the first quarter. Rector. Lindbergh. Circling out high. Now Keaton called for the travel. Lindbergh handed it off to him, and Mason took steps. And it will go over to the Highlanders once again. Way down to the left corner. Wide open for three. Oneida lost him. And knocking it through is going to be Ethan Reagan. Obviously in there with and a purpose. And notice three Indians were running at him. You've got to communicate that. Even if he misses, they're going to get the rebound right there probably. Oneida now down nine here on the road. And this is going to be Mason Keaton over to Rector. Gavin directing traffic, hands it off. Mason gets into the paint, backs up for the hanging Great. jumper. Good. Great. Look. Cuts it to seven with three minutes to play first quarter. Or against the Onada zone here. Glasper wants to drive into it, kicks it to the corner. Reagan, Onada recovers to him this time. And Gatlinburg will reset. Glasper on the wing, fakes the pass, driving through, hands on him. It's going to be called here against Onada. It'll be a foul. If that's on Lindbergh, it's his second. And Sends Glasper to the line for two. Yep, that's the fifth foul on the Indians. Ty Glasper will go to the line for a pair of free throws here. First one won't go. So Lindbergh will check out. Jagan Morgan returns to the floor. Still a seven-point contest. Second toss, good. And now Jesse Zachary will give Gavin Keaton some rest here with 2.45 in the first quarter. Full court pressure, inbounds Morgan. Now racing up the right side with it. Morgan picked up by Orr. Now finds Mason. Gatlinburg in the man-to-man. -man. Zachary 
on the floor with it back to Mason. Wants to drive on Glasper. Pulls up, hanging jumper. Uh. This one rolls off the front of the iron. No good. And back the other way, it's going to be Whaley to the baseline. Rips it over to the corner. Three-pointer is up and no good this time from Reagan and pulled in by Brauner. Ahead, Keaton, wide open. Mason for three. Good. Big shot. Big shot. Timeout, Jacob King. All right, we'll take the same. 205, first quarter, your score. Gatlinburg 14, 09 to 9. <laughs> 205 to go from Gatlinburg. Coach Jacob King with a timeout and a five point deficit. What do you think he was talking about in that timeout? Well, one locking down on D, but it looks like they're, they're coming back out in this 2 3. Got to communicate with these cutters and get out on shooters in the corners. Reagan has shown he's a shooter. Yazel here with it. Looks free throw line. Orr lobbing it down. Loose basketball. Grab it, grab it, grab it. And it's going to be Orr. It's going to be a tie-up situation. And the possession arrow keeps it down here on the Gatlinburg end. Minute 39, first quarter. You know, just like that right there, the 50-50 balls you've got to get to. And, you know, just going back to our game, how many rebounds were there, how many yeah. balls were there that we didn't, and they, they put it in, or they get fouled after they, they get it. It's just so, so much more physical. Ben Gilbert checks in. Jesse Zachary blocks Orr's shot. Reagan comes up with the basketball, and he's fouled on the shot. So Reagan is going to get two free throws, as this foul will be against the Indians. And the first shot from Reagan is good. Not foul was on Jagan Morgan. Morgan picking up the foul. Second toss from Reagan is good. It is 16 to 9. Back to a seven point lead. And onto the floor, Seth Sutton for Gatlinburg. And Orr on the inbounds kicks it back out of bounds. Now the bounce feed in to Mason Keaton. With a minute and a half to play in the first quarter, on a down seven. Slated to get the ball to start the second quarter. Here's Keaton. Gets past Glasper, driving all the way through. Oh! Mm, looks like he's backpedaling. Yeah, I agree. Backpedaling Seth Sutton, but it's going to be a foul, a charge call on Oneida. And for Mason, I'll tell you that's what, his if first. If it's a 50-50 call, you know who's getting it. Now down to the left corner. I'm, I'm acting like Mark Matthews. Here's a travel. You being a coach, you might get in trouble with TWSAA uh, if you say uh, about the refs. <laughs> they don't. They don't know it's him. They don't monitor our broadcast. Is that if what you're going to say, Mo? If they're worried about what I'm <laughs> saying on this, <laughs> then they're getting overpaid. Rector bringing it in. Morgan battling with it. It goes out of bounds. It's going to stay with Oneida. I take or that back, how. that 50, 50, 50 <laughs> call went to us. Yeah. And it may not have been, it may have been 99 to 1. That, that one, yeah. Rector to work the ball inbounds to Morgan. Now over to Mason Keaton. Keaton ahead to Rector. We hit the minute mark here in the first quarter. Here's good, Morgan. Good find. The three is good. Great, Great pass. Find. Great pass. Oh, not he threw it to Gilbert in the corner. And nothing against Gilbert, but Jagan's your shooter. Down by four now with less than a minute to play in the first quarter. In the zone, Glasper tries for a three. It's short. Rebound falls to the floor, and it's going to be Keaton who comes up with it. He's got his head up immediately, firing it down court. Gilbert with the basketball. Oh, Trying to go back over to Mason. Keaton, but it's tipped and stolen, and Sutton will take it the other way for the lay-in. Seth Sutton. Off the bench, comes up with the turnover and the lay-in. It's a six-point game. And now Mason into front court, 20 seconds in the first quarter. Goes past Orr, then loses How the basketball and is going to be called for having a foot on the line. I think you thought maybe there was a foul there. I think there were two fouls there when he split them. So with 14.8 to go first quarter, it will be... Gilbert out, returning to the floor. Keaton and Brauner trying to keep it a six-point game at the close of one. 
Glasper starts right, fires left to the corner. Here's Reagan for three. Indians get a hand in his face. He doesn't hit it. Now it's a steal, and Oneida closes the quarter down six. We'll take a break and be back. Your score, Gatlinburg 18, Oneida 12. <laughs> Welcome back. Second quarter getting started here in Gatlinburg. Oneida down six with the basketball. A trio of Keatons with Hayden Bronner and Jagan Morgan. Your starting lineup for Oneida. Glasper uh, defending. Glasper or oh. Sutton. Um, Richardson. And who did I miss? Yeah, back to the starters for everybody. Whaley. Yep. There you go. Thank you, Bo. So Oneida turns it over on their first possession. Back the other way, or deep three. Glance is no good. Rebound, Hayden Bronner's bringing them in right now. Onada with another opportunity down six. Gavin hands it off Mason. There's the reach and foul on Whaley. And that will be his. Well, don't see him up there. Bo will have to fill that blank in here in a minute. <laughs> it was just Orr's first foul. Orr. Oh, that was Orr? Gotcha. Oh, no, excuse me. I'm sorry. The foul was on Whaley. Okay. Keaton back out top in an 18-16 game. Gavin dumps it down to Bronner, out to Grady for three. Glance is no good. Back well, rebound, rebound. Jackie and Morgan. Morgan. Couldn't get it to fall, though, and now it's going to be taken in by Sutton. Indians getting opportunities. Yeah. Now Glasper fires it to Sutton around the corner. There's going to be a three, no good. Rebound, Keaton out on the run. That miss was from Whaley. Keaton dishes Brauner, reach in foul nice. as he's going to shoot. Sutton commits the foul, and Brauner will be at the line for a pair with Oneida down six. Well, definitely hope, hope they keep being aggressive. Already got two fouls on them, minute 15 into this quarter. It would be nice to get a lot of free throws down the stretch. Probably just jinxed it. Hayden knocks this one down. Reagan, who shows the long range, returns to the floor. And also Charlie Yasel to the floor. Second free throw won't go for Brauner. So it's a five-point game. Last per head to Yasel. They work it from Harris around to Reagan. Well, not making that well, not a zone work. Glasper set up for a three, no good. Backside rebound blocked from Morgan, uh, but it was touched by Grady Keaton out of bounds. But Jagan, very active, doing a good job. I've been very proud and pleased with, with Jagan this year. He has really come on on both ends of the floor. Absolutely. But, you know, they're, they're forcing GP to a lot of long shots. I, and I don't know if they usually shoot that deep. I know their girls do, but. I don't, I don't know much about their boys. The freshman Matute here, that's a second three and just his short stint in the game, and looks like that's what his specialty is. Evidently. As the freshman knocks down the three with his first minutes off the bench, and now it's going to be Keaton into front court with Oneida down eight. Fires it over to Grady on the floor. Gavin, top of the key, looking in, down in the paint. Mason trying uh. to dump it in for Brauner. It went off Matute and it's picked up by Reagan. Now in an eight-point game, Glass will ring it the other way. And he's going to be fouled on a reach-in by Morgan, You've I think. You've got to be kidding there me. Was a what lot is of the difference in that and what the – What's going on with the Mason? The kid's going on with the Scarden Mason. Yeah. What, what's the difference there? I don't, I don't see it. I mean, I'm sure Jagan really muscled him over right there going to be the first foul and the oh. inbounds goes off of Brauner and Glasper lays it up and in for a 10 point lead back at the other end it's going to be a foul on Reagan as Grady Keaton didn't let it phase him just rushes back trying to take it to the basket and Reagan picks up the foul you know, a good way to beat pressure is to get the ball in quick yes Grady will have two free throws here and coach King's going to take a timeout After the second one, it would look like. Oh, stay up there with it. Orr checks in for Harris. In a 10-point game, Grady Keaton 
free throw is good, and Onada takes the timeout. We'll take the same. Your score, Gatlinburg 23, Onada 14. <laughs> Welcome back to Gatlinburg. Coach Marv West is joining us here for the boys' game. Lady Indians fell earlier tonight to a, a state contending Gatlinburg Lady Highlander team. First look at them. Uh, they'll be in Onada January the 5th. So, always looking. You'll be looking for progress, right? Quick. Quickly. <laughs> well, we've got, you know, William Blunt next Tuesday. Uh, and then two more games after that th throughout that week. We've got to figure some things out quick. Onada's Indians, you see on the 20K scoreboard, down nine here at Gatlinburg out of an Onada timeout. Seeing the Highlanders work the ball around the perimeter here. And they get it to Reagan down in the left corner. Reagan back nice. out top. Grady Keaton comes <laughs> up with the steal as they go for Glasper. Now Grady looking for help. Finds Rector. Rector back out top. Grady Keaton fouled here by the freshman Matu. That's the fourth team foul. Next one will send the Indians to the line. Here in Gatlinburg, they say, don't mess with Matu. <laughs> I was thinking that. I, I know you were. That. I know you were. I saying that. <laughs> oh. I remember when you were a DJ and you played that <laughs> junk all the time. Gavin <laughs> Keaton goes over to Grady Keaton. Uh, it was very highly entertaining and requested. That should be a trivia question. Here is Glasper with a two. Shot won't nice. go. Ah. Brawner trying to come up with it, but there is Matu sneaking in to put it back up and in. Now it's a double-digit lead for the Highlanders. Clock. No clock running. Clock is set here and frozen. Hmm. And now it's going to be Grady out oh. top with it. Clock. Driving through Rector. The three, no good. Now the clock runs. And the officials are We're going to discuss. 40 seconds. He was keeping track in his head. Now, Lucas, can you get us a look at that referee? No, oh, up, I see what I think. Seconds. I see what the issue is. Devlin Markham is sitting over at the scores table. That's why the <laughs> clock wasn't running. <laughs> they, they this, so this official or, is this? Now Stuart Jones isn't here tonight, but it could be a cousin. Anyway, they're they're ticking it down. This official just in the, moved it. Just oh, in yeah, the it face. Does look, it does, don't it? In the face, a little bit. Who? Stuart needs to get that Stuart haircut Jones, a little lower. This official right there that you're looking at. He don't look like him up close. <laughs> <laughs> Glasper will bring it across midcourt. Now, Matute left wing. Back out top, Glasper. Matute, they do love that long range shot, and they're good at it with the three. Now Gatlinburg doubling up Onada. 14-point lead, 28-14 the score. Bounce feed, miscommunication. Onada looks into coming up with it, and Grady Keaton's three won't go. Rebound tipped out by Zachary. Four and a half to play in the first half. And Gatlinburg will bring it the other way. So what's your, what time do you play on Tuesday? 4.30, right? 4.30. As Glasper drives, can't get the shot to go, but is able to knock the ball away from Zachary. And then a jump ball is affected, and Gatlinburg comes up with it. Guys, if you put that ball down against teams like this, it's not coming back up. We talked about that during your game. How? I mean, has that been a focal point for you guys to God, tell your girls I've to? I've yeah. preached chin in the ball for years, not, not bringing it low. But it's especially important against good teams. Because those guards that they've got are just so, so quick-handed. They swarm you. Clasper on the drive, going to be fouled on the floor by Mason Keaton. Every bit of that contact is initiated by the offense. Yet, yeah, it's a defensive foul. Second foul on Mason. I mean, there's nothing you can do if it's – if he just wants to jump to jump into you, step into you, it's going to be a foul oh, every trip. And now they're saying that he was in the act of shooting. Okay. Well, must have watched the replay monitor. Clasper. He'll go to the line for two shots here, first of which is good. That makes it a 15-point lead. 
11-2 run, the Highlanders in the quarter make it 12-2. Knocks down both of the free throws and pushes the lead to 16. Now Keaton, Mason in the front court. Getting pick help from Gavin. Drives right, pulls up, hanging jumper. Glasper hand in his face. The shot falls short and the rebound Matoop. Over to Glasper. Who drives, misses the lay-in. It's kept alive by Gatlinburg, but right to the hands of Mason Keaton. Keaton driving through, scoops the shot up. No good, but he does draw the foul here. That's the fifth team foul on Gatlinburg in this quarter. So any more fouls, Onata shoots two free throws, and Mason will here because he was in the act of shooting. They called the foul on Reagan, who was no even near the play. Free throw won't go. We'll have a second opportunity. Second one goes for Mason from the line. So it's a 30-15 contest. Mason will get a little rest here. Landon Lindbergh checks in. Gatlinburg, oh, nearly a travel there. And now it's going to be Orr backing down in. Nice bounce feed on the cut. It was a nice cut, nice feed, but they don't connect on it. And now down court, Glasper. Skies and pulls in this steal, gets it over to Matute for three. Shot won't go on the rebound. It's over the back of Jesse Zachary. So we're going to walk down, and Jesse's going to shoot two free throws. With 3.09 to play in the first half, clock stopped and scoring opportunity here. In, in the earlier game, in this game, it's hard to take your reliable ball handlers off the court against yeah. these teams. They're, they're – they're deeper, both teams yeah. deeper. Yeah, a lot. I mean, and it just comes with the size and the area that you're in, size of the school and the area that you're in. Indians free throw struggles. But now Glasper's not been out, has he? Not uh, that I've noticed. Very, very short time, I believe. I think for I maybe think, about So he's the one seconds. that's the Division One receiver. Is that right? Uh, or, or number or two. Is, okay. He's the one that just signed today with uh, Illinois. Illinois, that's correct. Onata can't connect on either of the free throws. And a hand check foul against the Indians back here at the other end. I think it's going to be Limburg. Yep, and that's his third. Morgan checks in for him. So, Gatlinburg bringing it back in. Jagan. As Bo mentioned, back on the court, now Garden Glasper, who drives right all the way through, scoops the shot up, and a late <laughs> whistle and a foul probably on Zachary here will put Glasper at the line for two free throws. <laughs> and that will be. It's against Zachary. It's his first. Oh, not his fourth team foul. Glasper That's knocks nice. in the free throw, though. Pushes the lead back out to 16. Second toss, good. And now Hayden Bronner will bring it in to Grady Keaton. 17-point game. Keaton double-teamed in rear court, dribbles past them, keeps the dribble going, and somehow uh, came up with it, but then Glasper comes up with the steal, takes it to the other end, and lays it up and in. And Oneida takes the timeout. With 2.35 in the first half, we'll take the break. Your score, Gatlinburg 34, Oneida 15. Welcome back to Gatlinburg. Twin K scoreboard has the Highlanders up 19 on the Indians. And Onada has gone through three timeouts now here in this first half. Coach Jacob King trying to keep this thing competitive. What would be your target? Two and a half minutes to go first half. What do you want to try to do between now and halftime? Well, one, get in, you know, take a bite out of this lead. But they're sending two people at us. We've got to get somebody to the middle. We've got to get another guard to come up high. Yeah, it seems like we're getting it's trapped on the side. Up, yeah, there. as soon as you push it to a side, they've got you. Top of the key, a three-pointer from Glasper. Ah! It's a gentle. Well, he's been to the free throw line several times, so now that shot's where he wants it. Gentle there, giving him. There's yeah, a reach. Got to be a reach. Going to be called on Matute. 
And that will put Mason Keaton at the line for two free throws. 2.07 in the first half, stopping the clock. Thirty-seven fifteen currently. Mason's first free throw is good. We'll have a second opportunity here. Long rebound tip by Zachary. It'll go out of bounds and over to Gatlinburg. And Glasper will bring it forward for the Highlanders. One three one for the Indians now. Glasper hits the back door cut for the lay-in. And that was run very well. Cam Richardson with the lay-in. Now a 23-point lead for the Highlanders. As Keaton drives through, they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. He tried to get it over to Morgan. Uh, but a turnover on the baseline here. Now Glasper with a minute 40 to play in the first half. This team with a 23-point lead. Whaley, the skip pass across to Anderson, back to Glasper for three. It's good. I think he's feeling it. Yeah, he's up to 18 now. 42 to 16 is the score. Right here, somebody flashed to the middle. Look how open that is. Now Morgan. You can't hang out. It just puts so much pressure on your ball handlers. Zachary finds Mason Keaton. The three won't fall. And the rebound is pulled in by Richardson. And now Orr back to Glasper with a minute to go. Step back three from the left side. Won't go. Rebound. Morgan, and he's fouled by Glasper. And so we'll walk to the other end, and Jagan Morgan will shoot a pair of free throws here. Glasper second. 42-16, 57 seconds remain, first half. Jagan eyes the mark for the free throw. It's going to be short. What are we free throws right now? Uh, ben Gilbert in for Zachary. Six of 13. I mean, not that that's the difference, but it's just. It definitely doesn't help. Yeah. Eight, eight misses. Yeah. Now back the other way, Sutton to Whaley. Whaley has it knocked away uh, by Grady Keaton, but is able to clean it up, but then throws it away. Mason Keaton wants to take it up against Sutton, and it's going to be knocked by Ben Gilbert out of bounds, and Sutton was standing there and hit with the basketball. So Nida will. Bring it in with 41 seconds to play. Slated to get the ball to start the second half. Mason. Fires it out top. Rector. Caden puts it on the floor. Gets a pick from Bronner and is fouled by Whaley. He's shooting two. Caden will have another couple of a couple of free throws. But again, the Indians have missed eight of their 14 free throws, as was pointed out just a moment ago. Forty-two sixteen. Gatlinburg. Free throw from Rector. This one's good. He'll have one more for the Highlanders. Talon. Peterson and Charlie Yazel to the floor. And a second free throw from Rector is good. Good job. Now back the other way. Going to be Matu. Bounce feed. Rector knocks it loose. Still a loose basketball. Gatlinburg is able to get to it. Now Rector gets the steal with 24 seconds. Driving down court. Scoops the shot up. No good. Tip. No good by Mason Keaton. Now Reagan is going to take it back the other way. Working against Brauner, misses the shot. 12 seconds in the first half. Rector trying to go ahead to Gilbert, finds Grady Keaton for the jumper good. And with four seconds remaining, it's going to be a heave from Seth Sutton that is no good. 
and we go to halftime. The Vantage Point Financial Halftime Report is coming up. After two quarters of play from Gatlinburg, your score is Gatlinburg 42, Onata 20. Welcome back to Gatlinburg Pittman in the Vantage Point Financial Halftime Report. As the Highlanders lead the Indians by a score of 42 to 20 here at the half. Vantage Point Financial, they can take care of all your financial needs and secure your future. Bo, you got our first half statistics. I do for Gatlinburg Pittman, 14 of 36 from the floor tonight for 39%, 5 of 17 from 3 for 30%. 9 of 11 from the free throw line for 82%. Led in the first half by Mr. Ty Glasper. He's 5 of 16 from the floor, but he's got 18 points uh, because he's 6 of 7 from the free throw line. 18 points, 3 assists, 3 steals on the night. Uh, also, 5 points, 3 rebounds from Mason Harris. Carlos Orr has no points in the first half. Uh, 2 points, 3 rebounds from Wade Whaley. Uh, two points from Cam Richardson, eight points, three rebounds off the re or off the bench from Roger Matute, and two points for Seth Sutton, also five points for Ethan Reagan. For the Indians, five of 18 from the floor in the first half for 28%, two of five from three for 40%, uh, eight of 16 from the free throw line, 50%. Led in the first half by Mason Keaton. He's got seven points to go along with four rebounds. Also three points for Jagan Morgan, five points for Grady Keaton, two for Gavin Keaton. Uh, just one point for Hayden Brauner on the night, and then two points off the bench for Caden Recker. Uh, Gatlinburg only five turnovers. The Indians 15 turnovers in the first half. Thank you both for that. When we return to the Vantage Point Financial Halftime Report, Bo is going to take a look around East Tennessee and catch us up on the Hillwood Foods out-of-town scoreboard here on the IH Sports Network. Welcome back to Gatlinburg in the Vantage Point Financial Halftime Report. It's now time for a Helenwood Foods out-of-town scoreboard. Hey, this week at Helenwood Foods, Marv, they've got smoked hog jowls for $4.99 a pound, so you can get ready for New Year's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> got any black eyed peas? Yeah, they got black eyed peas, but those are not on sale. Uh, <laughs> chicken tenders also. Yeah, they're chicken not tenders. You mean they're not like a deal for both together? Hmm. We'll have to set that up with them next time. Do you? Because uh, we brought this up earlier. Sauerkraut goes with that, right? Do you eat sauerkraut? I don't eat any of it. <laughs> oh, well. you can't tell by looking at me. I do eat chicken that, tenders. You go else. for the chicken tenders. <laughs> yes, I love chicken tenders. Had some today at Cheddar's. By the way, <laughs> Devlin Markham's aware of your comment. And he's not happy. <laughs> <laughs> Bow. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, Maribel Christian gets the win over Knox Christian tonight, 74-29. to This is boys scores. Uh, Fulton stays unbeaten as they defeat Stone Memorial tonight, 73-39 to in that contest. And then we'll stay with the boys for one more. Uh, Pope John Paul II defeats York tonight, 86-67. to on his own. <laughs> Apparently so. 86 to 67 in that one. Wow. Uh, going back to the girls' uh, games on the night, Morristown West defeated Jefferson County 57 38. Sevier County beats Morristown East 48 to 31. Uh, Maryville defeats Fulton tonight 54 to 41. Uh, Oliver Springs gets the win over Jellicoe 37 to 34. Sunbright stays unbeaten uh, with a 50 to 15 win over Eagleton tonight. Kingston defeats Sweetwater 70 to 37. Uh, Wartburg defeats Coalfield tonight, 65 to 46 in that contest. Uh, Harriman's girls defeated Rockwood, 36 to 26. Farragut defeated William Blunt tonight, 52 to 32. Thank you both for that. And that was the Helenwood Foods out of town scoreboard. We're going to take a one minute break, and we'll be back for the second half of this one as the Highlanders lead the Indians, 42 to 20, here on the IH Sports Network. We'll go back to Gatlinburg, 42-20. Gatlinburg leads. Oneida will start with the basketball here in the – Clock must be hard to operate. Apparently. Third quarter. And it'll it'll be, she's, taking, she's taking the advice from Devlin Markham. It is Glasper, <laughs> Orr, <laughs> Richardson, <laughs> Harris, and who am I missing? 
Whaley. Sure, five for Gatlinburg as Mason Keaton drives through. Shot rolls off, no good. Mason Gavin, Grady Keaton, Caden Rector, Hayden Brauner. And now the bounce feed down in. And this is going to be Richardson out. Loose basketball and maintained by Harris. And now Glassville back it up, guarded here by Grady Keaton. Man-to-man defense. Orr. And they work it around the right side. Whaley dumps it in. Orr. Yeah, he, he may have took a couple steps. I was thinking that maybe move. that pivot, but pivot foot slid. Now, we also let him face cut us. And yep. Unimpeded. Now Rector. And now over. This is going to be. Bronner to Gavin Keaton. Oh. And then Glasper comes up with a loose basketball and lays it up and in. Oh. Rough first minute of the second half for the Indians here. Gatlinburg expands the lead now to 26. Got to see it. Got to see it. There is Can't a foul called, called on Glasper, his third. That's, that's less than what he did the majority of the first half. <laughs> Of course, it is a 26-point game. I guess we can call it now. So now uh, this is probably a stupid question because that's what I'm really good at. But officials, same officials we see all the time, or is no, it different now? They, this is a different association. I would guess it's Smoke, Smoky Mountain Association. Uh, and then we'll see a different association in, at Alcoa and in Knoxville, too. Keaton for three. Mason knocks down the three. And it is Gatlinburg doubling up the Indians, but Mason hits a three, trying to cut into it. Now the Indians need to stop. Glasper spinning, though, and he has really warmed up since the late second quarter. Yes, he has. 22 now on the night. Inside six to play in the third quarter. Mason looks to Grady on the left wing. There's a double team. Grady. Was able to save it to Gavin. Gavin good to the five. corner. Rector's three. Good. Caden knocks down a three. Uh, and, and there went Grady. Grady is injured. We So Grady didn't play Tuesday. It's his meniscus, we understand, that continues to move out of place. And... That is a very painful thing. Yes, it is. He's trying to play through it, get the meniscus back in, and here's a foul probably on Brauner. And Glasper gets the shot to go. Well, it's pick your poison. You either go double team him, and he gives it up to a three-point shooter, or you let him drive, I, you know. Matute toot ain't in, so I, I, you may take a chance on doubling him. That may be the counter to it. We'll bring him in. So they'll take Grady to the locker room. Now, I don't know how this works. If they get the meniscus back in, does he return that night? I, I wouldn't or think he would. I would no. I I wouldn't try it. But I wouldn't want him to personally. Yet, but Glasper's free throw is good. Gavin Keaton also checked out his – uh, Jesse Zachary came into the game. Now the inbounds. Brauner seals Harris off. Gets it back to Rector. And Rector finds front court and Mason Keaton. Left wing for three. Good. So, Onada takes a timeout. There will be one left when we return with 521 to play third quarter. Your score is Gatlinburg 51, Onada 29. Welcome back to Gatlinburg, 51-29. Onada down 22. And Coach Jacob King has used his fourth of five timeouts here in this third quarter. Sensing a moment when uh, he's hoping his team can rally and kind of turn this thing around a little bit. It's been a lot of momentum for Gatlinburg, especially for this man, Glasper, but he gets a wide open three. Can't get it to go, but they don't get a box on the tip from Whaley. Out of the timeout, pushes it back out to 24. 
And find Mason, right now. Mason into front court, trying to find Rector, but it's going to be stolen away to the other end for a lay-in, and it's Cam Richardson. So Onada will bring it the other way. Yep. yep. And Morgan got the inbounds and then took steps. So Glasper will work it in from the baseline. Poor Gavin just took a shot from Jason Pike over there. <laughs> he was trying to show him something to do, and he walked up to check in. <laughs> or <laughs> Rough night all around. <laughs> or lays it up and in. So Jason Pike added to your staff this year. He's been with the boys' staff for a while. And my question is, does he sleep? Well, he's got I a daughter he playing is, middle school. He has got to be so tired by the end of two practices or two games, I'm mentally drained. And let me tell you, he's been a great addition for us. He's, you know, we're we're a work in progress. We, I know, you know, we had a lot of kids, you know, that we're going to depend on that haven't played much. And, you know, if I'm not saying something or Dad's not saying something, Jason is constantly barking. No bites yet. Oh, that's good. <laughs> but it's probably coming. <laughs> Foul on Onada. Going to put Gatlinburg at the line for two shots. He, he, he's like me. He, he starts it off with girls. You know, I love you. But. but. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you are with your kids too, right? Oh, so, yeah. So I uh, love you. Does he have a specialty? I mean, is it. Well, you know, him and Dave are really working with our post players because that's. You know, we haven't had a true back-to-the-basket post player in a while, and we were really, you know, working Lacey and Larissa hard together, <laughs> trying to, you know, because Lacey's length will help us a lot. And, you know, there she's, she's still having some trouble from her sur off-season surgery. Well, not a down 30 now as Lindbergh. Puts up the three, good. Good shot, good shot Landon. With 3.45 to play in the third quarter. Cuts it back down to 27. Well, not back in the press. And middle of the floor, pass is tipped. Loose basketball to the floor. It's got to be a wall. Gatlinburg saves it to Mason Keaton, who's going to take it up against Whaley. Shot is short, rebound is Glasper, and he'll bring it out the left side. Into front court. Now attacking through the paint, all the way under. Shot won't go. The follow by Orr is no good, but he's fouled. Third foul on Oneida. Orr will go to the line for a pair of free throws. Foul goes against Gavin. That's third. Team's third of the quarter. Shot from Orr is good. Puts Gatlinburg at 60. Ben Gilbert checks in for Jesse Zachary. Second toss from Orr. No good. Rebound tipped. And Orr comes up with a loose basketball. Puts it up. No good. Tip is good for Gatlinburg's Richardson. Relentless on the boards. I mean... Mason pulls up for a two. Cuts it back down to 28. Now down court, Matu into Trying the game. Oh. Yeah, got it's got to be a foul. Yeah. Foul on the floor. Yeah, it'll be against Orr, actually. Got two hands into the back of Caden Rector. Yeah, that was hard for them not to call that. Yeah. Gavin brings it in to Caden Rector. He looks across to Mason in the double team. They'll find Rector. Now they find Lindbergh in the left corner. Wide open the three. Going to sail along this time. Gilbert battling for the rebound. It'll be a jump ball. Stays with Oneida on this round. 2.45 to go, third quarter. Reagan returns to the lineup. And Yazel. Mason 
We'll work it in. Gavin cutting to the basket. Hooks the shot up there no good, but draws the whistle. And let's see who this one's against. It'll be Gaisel. Rector's got something going on with his hand over there having to take. Shot from Gavin Keaton is good. And he'll have a second opportunity here. Good there. 26 is the difference with 2.42 to play in the third quarter. Razel's pass to Glasper in rear court. Now he fires it across. Matute wants to drive oh, down, oh, well, traveled with it. And Gatlinburg turns it over. <laughs> Onada with a bit of a surge here late in the third. Pressure from Gatlinburg full court. And Mason now into front court. Hits Gavin cutting. Rector out to Lindbergh. Back to Rector. Ben Gilbert posting down there on the baseline. Gatlinburg goes man to man here. Rector takes his man nice, into the paint. Ball nice. fake, layup good. Nice play by Caden Rector. Now down court, Reagan. Pitches to the freshman with the long range. Now to the corner, Sutton. Inside two to go. Sutton's going to look at a three. It's good. Seth Sutton. Senior guard knocks down the three-pointer, and now Onada into front court with the basketball. Lindbergh draws a crowd, kicks it out to Rector for the three-point answer, and it's good. Now Glasper picks it up rear court, Gazel. And now they throw across. It's tipped by Mason Keaton. Still loose basketball. Now Glasper's going to be fouled on the floor, right? Or is it going to be in the act of shooting? Oh, yeah. You know it's going to be a two-shot. The continuation. I got you. Three <laughs> steps. You're right. I mean, I shouldn't have asked. And that's Lindbergh's fourth. 121 in the third. Free throw shooting machine. Glasper knocks this one down. 66 to 41. Hayden Brauner back in now for Gavin Keaton. Second toss good. And now Orr checks in. Glasper is going to get a rest. After 27, he probably should. Is that what he's, he's at 27? He's at 27 right now. Lindbergh to Gilbert. Back to Lindbergh against this pressure in rear court. And Gatlinburg bails Onata out with a reach-in foul. That's their fourth foul. So the Indians will bring it inside rear. Lindbergh will work it into Mason Keaton. As we hit the minute mark of the third quarter, I'm out of trailing by 26. Mason tries to get it out to Brauner, and he saves it to Lindbergh, who then drives, and then it's going to be fouled on his way to the basket. Gatlinburg's fifth, 56 seconds to go in the third. Lindbergh will have a pair of free throws here. That's Orr's fourth. Orr's had a very, fairly quiet night. Yeah, only uh, only five points, four rebounds. Free throw from Lindbergh won't go on the first try. He'll have another. Well, one thing that uh, both teams will have going for them is when, you come, when they come, when Gatlinburg comes to Oneida, uh, they've had such wild success here against the two teams tonight. Um, sometimes a team will expect it to be that way the second time. Gives you a chance to kind of sneak in there. How's that for a positive spin after the three? I just want to see us compete more. And here, Islanders. Turn it over with 37 <coughs> seconds to play in the third. <laughs> B. 
But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. If you beat a team in a, in a case like that, then it's hard to keep the focus that, hey, it's going to be different next time. Yeah. Now the inbounds, Brawner trying to get it ahead to Keaton. Loose basketball. Gilbert comes up with it. And now he's going to kick it back out to Lindbergh. Gatlinburg will get it to start the fourth. Onata possessing right now, down 23. With 20 seconds to play in the third, Mason drives past the defender. Shot rolls, no good. Rebound is going to be pulled in, and Gatlinburg in transition. Will head fake. Glasper drives through and gets the two. With eight seconds to play in the third. Onata will get it in to Keaton, four. You see the clock as Keaton takes the shot. Good, and he's fouled. Who's that on? Big foul call here. It's on Glasper. And that's his uh, third, fourth, fourth. fourth. Now yeah, looking at the wrong side. His fourth. Keaton's free throw is good. And .4 seconds. That's the end of the third. We take the break after three. Gatlinburg 69 on out of 47. We'll go back. Fourth quarter. Well, not a down 22, Bo. Yeah, we uh, enter the fourth quarter. Mason Keaton with 24 po- or 21 points, four rebounds. Uh, Mr. Glass for 29 points, three assists, two rebounds. It's going to be a shot good for Whaley, and he draws the foul. And that puts Onada down 24 with 7.53 to go. Foul goes against Gilbert. Free throw is on the way and good for Whaley. Oh, gosh. What happened Kid there? got the raw end of that. <laughs> Went right into that. I mean, so the pick was set by the ref. <laughs> the doppelganger. Jeez. <laughs> Rector to bring the ball in bounds. Uh, a little miscommunication. It's going to be a steal and a lay-in. Very indecisive with cuts and not knowing where to pass to. Now Whaley, yep, got the elbow into Mason Keaton on the way up court. So that'll be a foul on Whaley. That's Whaley's third. 20 fouls called against GP here in the game, 16 against Oneida. I guess they showed me. (laughs) (laughs) So... State must have been listening. Down court. (laughs) Mason Keaton gets the shot to fall. Nearly dunked that one down. I guess that's his 23rd point. Correct. And now down court at the other end, Harris. Nice pass to Orr, and he gets the lay-in to go. 7.15 to play. And Rector puts it on the floor, hands it off. Mason in the front court. As Glasper's continuing to get some rest here, it'll be Rector for three. Glances the iron, no good. Nice rebound by Ben Gilbert. And now Mason driving through the paint, kicks it out. Rector stepping left for three. Good. Good look. Makes it a 24-point game. And now the other way, Orr with the basketball to Whaley for three. He drained it. You can't it. give it up wide open on nope. the other end. 79-52. These kids live to answer those threes. You know what? Yep. And they're very good at it. Rector into front court. Handing off triple to Mason team. Keaton to a triple team. Back to Rector. Bounce feed down low. Brauner backing in. Oh. And backing to Russ. Is going to be what the official says. Brauner picks up the foul. So Gatlinburg with the basketball up 27, 618 to play. Into front court, Sutton with the basketball. It's the cutter back out to Glasper for three, and it's good. Now Morgan brings it in to Keaton, Mason. Six minutes to go in a 30-point game. Mason splits 
Drives, shot won't go, rebound or way out in front, Richardson. All the way, lays it across the front of the iron in a 32-point lead now. Rector working forward, tries to get it to Mason Keaton, but it's going to be stolen away, and Gatlinburg brings it to the other end for the lay-in. Well, <laughs> we, had, we had, had some really good trips. I mean, 17 to 5 here in the fourth quarter. It gets it gets away oh. from you quick. Mason back at the other end. It's going to be intercepted by Gatlinburg, and they'll take it for the reverse lay-in, which puts it at 36. That means we're going to have a running clock for the final five minutes of this one. And Onada will bring it forward with Morgan. Bounce feed going for Brauner, and it goes trickling out of bounds. So it is going to be a, a new five in for Gatlinburg. We get to learn some new names here. Onada gets Drayton Wade on the court to join Mason and Gavin. Jagan Morgan and Landon Lindbergh. As that clock ticks down. Mason Harris was a starter. He's out there. Sowen. They get the pass. Harris to the corner, and it's going to be a three up and no good here from Ethan Reagan. But Gatlinburg recycles with the possession. And they look down low. Husky can't get it to go. Reagan with the tip and the score. So now four minutes to play, 90 to 52 is the score. Gatlinburg set to get a, another couple of reserves in next dead ball. Mason to Gavin, now Jagan Morgan. Back to Mason Keat, driving to his right, pulls up for the hanging jumper, rattles won't go. Rebound is going to be pulled in, and Gatlinburg takes the timeout. We will take the same with 3.42 to go as we tell you the score. Oh, wait, wait, they're not going to break, are they? Yep. Oh. Yep. Oh, well, they're going to. Oh, not going to take the break. We'll keep it here. Uh, we want to thank Coach Marv West for joining us. He's going to make his way out now. Um, and like I said, tough night for both teams. We talked about it in the pregame. Uh, coming in here, tough place to play, two great teams, and – they did not disappoint. The Indians uh, are, have some work to do and got to try to find their way to compete with these two teams on January 5th when they come to Oneida. We had some great uh, opportunities tonight, the boys game here. I mean, we cut it down to single digits there several times, got them about six, I think, once, and then it just got once, it's bam, it's gone. You watch this boys team from Gatlinburg. Uh, you know, the girls' team we saw, probably the best girls' team in the district, more than likely. Yes. But there's not a huge drop-off to Alcoa, although they did graduate. They were both sub-state contenders a year ago as we've got a foul on Gatlinburg and Jagan Morgan will go to the line. But um, these Gatlinburg boys, this is not the best boys' team in the district. Ooh. The defending state Ooh. champs are in this district. Uh, and Alcoa. I don't think Alcoa lost too much last year, did they? Very little. Not no. not enough to make a difference. Yeah. <laughs> to make a big difference. Two fifty and ticking. How many Mister Basketball finalists do we have in our region this year? Will we have? I, I have mean, that's, had. I think we had two, didn't we, or something like that last year? Drayton Wade. Oh yeah, Cherry and. Uh, is a uh, in the Austin East. Not we haven't even mentioned Austin East and yep. Shane Cherry. So uh, we got some exciting basketball coming up. Um, Indians got to find a way to hang with some of these really powerful teams. Drayton Wade defending comes up with the loose basketball, gets it ahead to Limburg. Limburg in front court, back to the freshman Wade. Now Limburg driving left, hanging in the paint. The shot is no good. And Gatlinburg comes up with the basketball and brings it the other way. Lucas Erosen. Two-minute warning. And now the pass to the wing. Gatlinburg working around the perimeter here. We had the early start tonight. 
And a three-pointer from. No, they're saying he walked with it. Don't call no, it. they're. Jeremiah no. Anderson. Oh, did they? Yeah, he's calling it. He's still calling it. <laughs> oh, I thought they were just saying that for the. Uh, he's walking all the way down the end of the court. Oh, no, he got it. They gave it. Yeah, yeah, they gave it to him. That was just for substitutions. Oh, they stopped okay, the game for you. substitutions. Yeah, he was. He, he thought signal, the same man. thing as you. He looked <laughs> very unhappy there for a second. With a minute 25 to go. Privet to Cooper West. Back out to Privet. And now it's going to be a steal. Gatlinburg will bring it the other way, but he lost it off the foot out of bounds. With a minute 10 and ticking. And he's going to catch it for that from his teammates. You see over there right now. They're watching, ready. Watching They're that. ready, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take him out. Gee whiz. And the assistant coaches aren't letting up either. 50 seconds to play. Morgan to West. Privet, Wade, Drayton driving in. Kicks to Jagan Morgan, the three. Glance is no good. Rebound tipped out. And now Gatlinburg in the run out with the Rosen. Pitches it back to Peterson with 28 seconds to go. Peterson working against West. Dribbling all the way through. Leads it back out to Anderson. Gatlinburg going to run this clock out. And Coach Rashad Moore is going to pick up another district victory. And uh, we will next see them on January the 5th in Oneida for a rematch of these two teams in district play. We'll take a break after telling you the final in this one. It is Gatlinburg 93, Oneida 52. Welcome to the Danny King Lumber postgame report. The Indians fall tonight to the Gatlinburg Pittman Highlanders 93 to 52 with our final game statistics, Bo Kidd. Give me just a moment. I was in the middle of – you got me caught in the middle of saving well, no stats. <laughs> we got a few highlights to watch while you Gatlinburg do Gatlinburg Pittman moves to 9-2 and two tonight uh, on 34 of 61 shooting. They shoot 56% from the field, 9 of 23 from three for 39%. 16 of 19 from the charity stripe tonight for 84%. They were led by their – I mean, their leader. There's no question about it. Ty Glasper, he went 10 of 23 from the floor tonight, 3 of 9 from 3, but 9 of 10 from the charity stripe. He had finished with 32 points, 4 steals, 3 assists on the night. 16 points, 4 rebounds for Wade Whaley. Also 7 points, 5 rebounds for Carlos Orr. 5 points, 5 rebounds for Mason Harris. Eight points for Camden Richardson. Eight points for Roger Matute. Seven points for Seth Sutton. Three for Jeremiah Anderson. And seven points for Ethan Reagan. Just ten turnovers on the night for Gatlinburg Pittman. They also had 12 steals in the game. For Oneida, they finished the night 16 of 39 from the floor for 41%. Nine of 15 from three. 60% from deep hmm. tonight. But 11 of 23 from the charity stripe for just 48%. They were led on the night by Mason Keaton. He went eight of 19 from the floor, four of five from three, uh, three of five from the free throw line. He finished the night with 23 points, uh, four rebounds, two assists, and two steals. Also, Caden Rector off the bench tonight. Nice night for him as he went four of six from the floor, three of four from deep. He finished the night with 13 points, seven, re or seven assists on the night as well. Uh, three points. For Jagan Morgan tonight, five points for Grady Keaton, four for Gavin Keaton, one for Hayden Brauner, uh, three for Landon Lindbergh, and that rounds out your scoring for the Indians. 23 turnovers on the night for Oneida, just five steals uh, in the game. Oneida uh, did not lead in this ball game. Uh, Gatlinburg Pittman finished the night with their largest lead of the night at 41. Uh, Oneida's last field goal, though, we went on a seven-minute drought wow. at the end of the game uh, as we were outscored 24-5 to in the last quarter. All right. Thank you both for catching us up on that. We'll keep it right here on the Danny King Lumber Post Game Report. And now it's time for our Little's Drugs play of the game. Little's Drugs has – they're not just a drugstore. They've got all kinds of uh, good things to eat down there as well and uh, ice cream, 
sandwiches, anything you can think of. Littles Drugs down next to the intersection of 63 and 27 are play of the game. Do they have ice cream sandwiches or just ice creams and sta- sandwiches? Both. You're sure of that? Well, I mean, everybody's got ice cream sandwiches. Here's your play of the game. <laughs> Mason Keaton's 23rd point, if I got it right. There it is. I almost dunked it. And that's your Littles Drugs play of the game. Uh, it came late in the game here for the Indians. All right, now it's time for our Trophy Masters Hustle Award. Trophy Masters located on Main Street in Oneida, 569-8817. Trophy Masters Hustle Award this evening uh, goes to off the bench, Caden Rector. Once again, a nice night by Caden uh, as he finished with uh, 13 points, seven assists off the bench tonight in 21 minutes of play. Caden Rector, your Trophy Masters Hustle Award winner. And congratulations to Caden. And that brings us to our big one of the night, the First National Bank player of the game. First National Bank, been in service since 1904. First National Bank player of the game goes to number 11, Mason Keaton. Again, 8 of 19 from the floor, 4 of 5 from deep tonight. Finishes the night with 23 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals in 27 minutes. Mason Keaton, your player of the game. All right, thank you, gentlemen. We're going to take a break here on the Danny King Lumber Post Game Report. When we return, we'll have a, a talk with maybe, maybe, because I know. <laughs> well, Coach Jacob King had been invited to come up and do the game with it, the girls' game, and he wasn't. He's not feeling great tonight. Again, he's been battling some things, and he he was going to, but he was coughing too much. He may. We'll see if he's going to yeah. join us. Let's not promise. We'll, but. we'll give him a couple of minutes here yep. as you. Enjoy these ads from those that make this game possible here on the I Sports Network. Welcome back to Gatlinburg. You see the Twin K scoreboard final, the Gatlinburg Highlanders 93-52. Indians uh, were able to keep it competitive in the first half, played it in the even third quarter uh, with the Highlanders here in their gym, but uh, Gatlinburg pulled away late in this one. And uh, earlier tonight, the Oneida Lady Indians, both teams wound up with a running clock. So uh, life on the road in 2A in the district that we're in and your first dip into the pool on this has been about what we thought it might be. And uh, that's no disrespect to no. the Indians or the Lady Indians. That's just the fact that this this is uh, uh, two of the premier teams in this district. Yes, absolutely. Uh, in a district – that's got a lot of premier teams. But, but both of these teams, both of the Alcoa teams, and certainly the Austin East boys team uh, are all going to be formidable opponents uh, to deal with uh, and were sub-state participants and perhaps even state contenders uh, in that realm. So it does look like we're going to get Coach Jacob King yeah. uh, uh, here tonight. Ag- again, you said it, though. This is a – we knew going into this season that this could possibly be the toughest district, not not just in Class AA, in the state of Tennessee. And you saw part of the reason why that is tonight. There is a lot of talented teams in this district, and you've just na- named off uh, a handful of them right there that we're still yet to even see. Yeah, and, and, and there is some disparity between those teams and us, Eagleton – Pigeon Forge, but now um, Oneida and and those those two schools I just mentioned, of course, Eagleton, uh, the Indians got wins over on Tuesday night. Pigeon Forge should be competitive games as well, so uh, we'll see about that. Coach Jacob King joins us now, and Coach, uh, the Indians uh, got off to a, a, a <laughs> rough start a little bit uh, and then <coughs> kind of kept it. On a, a, I warned people you weren't feeling well, all right? So uh, you, you take it easy. But uh, the, the, you had a third quarter that you matched Gatlinburg out of the locker room, but they pull away in the fourth. Uh, but this team was every bit as good as advertised. They were. Now, honestly, I think they're 40 points better than us. No, I do not. We had a second quarter where we had one field goal. <coughs> one field goal and six yep. free throws. We do what we're supposed to. I thought we'd done well. We, our main thing was to keep them from checking second chance points. But when they did get them, they were big. It was a four or five point ball game in the second quarter. They got a layup, then a three. Okay, that's five points. Then we go six of 14 from the free throw line. 
you hit three more free throws, don't let them have that. It's a different mindset. But I, I'm proud of my guys because we didn't quit. Um, don't get me wrong, Ty Glesper, I think that's how you name him, and the North Kid, they're the real deal. They're the and, real deal. And early on, you did a pretty good job of containing both of them. We did. We were switching defenses, mm. and we got tired. And hey, You held order seven points tonight. So. Well, and but it's, we got to do – we got to we got – look, we're going to change some stuff the way we do offensively. I think we we got to pick more, more <laughs> screens, pressure relief, but – there's some things that I can't do. I can't shoot free throws. Nope. Um, we got to get in the gym, shoot free throws, and when we do shoot them, we got to be serious about it. And I'm not mad at my kids. Don't get me wrong, but we got to take it personal. And uh, but this loss is on me. I kind of figured. I didn't think we'd get beat like this, but I thought we would get introduced to what I've been talking about right. and how hard we got to play. Right. I think we know that. Um, we play them again on January 5th at our place. We're going to come and battle. I, don't, I mean, we're probably going to be down. Grady's going to have to go get something done to his knee. It locked up again on him. So, he's – hopefully it's just a scope two and th- two to three weeks. If they got to go in there and stitch it, he's probably done for the season. But we're going to hope for the best. But, you know what, I thought Caden and Landon shot the ball well in the third quarter. They did. Um, we had to press, too, and, that, and they got some easy stuff. And that probably made the score a little bit worse than what it was. But we had to try to do something. And we turned them over a few times. But – we're not a constant press team. They've just got too many guys and, and wore us down. But I'm going to go do some soul searching about what we need to do offensively. Not going to change nothing drastically, but we got to get some more movement, more screening. But, but I like my team. I still want to be in that locker room more than I would be want to be in that locker room. Nothing against them. I love my guys because they didn't quit. They did not quit. And uh, and like I say, you'll, you'll get another shot to see um, if you've taken some steps forward when Gatlinburg comes in on January 5th and – and uh, on our court, and uh, uh, it, this is just exciting opportunities to play against teams like this night yeah. after night, and uh, and the Indians just have to get better because these other teams are going to continue to get better, right? They are, and, 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 and I told somebody, I think, a couple of weeks ago that I may, may have been bold that we got to go see it firsthand. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, before we realize how hard we got to play and how hard we got to lay it on the line. Because I thought we did in the third quarter. That's what we talked about in halftime, come and fight. Don't quit. When we fought. We got loose ball balls. Um, but boys, we got to start taking, doing the little things. We got to take charges. We got to get on the ball on the floor. Um, I've got to do better as a coach as far as offensively getting movement, doing the right things, getting some pressure release for Mason. Mason gets wore down. We got to find somebody else to handle the ball, and and we will. Because I know these guys. I know these young men. They, they they'll fight. They'll fight. And you know, people's been saying. I mean, we ain't going to make the region. I don't believe that. I think we can. I think if we can get in the region, that other one we could play. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you, boys. We've got one or two or three of the best top ten teams in the state right here in this district with probably three or four Mr. Basketball candidates yeah. in the same district. But, so I, I mean, look, we're not going back down, and my kids are not going back down. We'll come to work Monday. we got a tough stretch next week. We'll be down a guy without Grady. We're going to go play – um, Kevin Wendell, who I went to play high school ball with, was a roommate with in college, a uh, good friend of mine. He's got a good squad. Um, his son's pretty good, too. He's about 6'5 and can shoot the lights out of it, and they're 4A. <laughs> but that's only going to make us better. We'll compete, and then we'll either play Carter or Campbell County the next day. It's going to be good competition, but it'll be good for us because we're going to have to figure out how to play hard and how, how to do it not just one or two people, but as a whole. Absolutely. As a whole. And I think we, I think some guys got their eyes open today how hard we got to play. I mean, Caden Rector played so hard. He said, Coach, take me out. I got to go throw up. He went and throwed up. So he played hard. Mm-hmm. We just got to fix some little things, guys. It, it ain't like it's major. It ain't major stuff. It's, it's some little things that we've got to do, free throws. Make sure when we rebound that we protect. Sometimes we got the boards, and they just come took it from us. Yeah, we got to be strong. And uh, that's stuff we can fix. Coach, uh, what time do you play Tuesday? We play at 11.15. 11 Tuesday morning. 11.15. Uh, that's Anderson County. Mm-hmm. Yes, Anderson County. And right. come out and support us. Uh, like I said, we're going to come in practice Monday evening and and, and go, go play for three days. Um, and, and after that, I'm going to give them a little bit of a break and come back in probably Wednesday after Christmas and get back and get ready for the second half of the season. I um, want well, to thank my Lord and Savior as always for saving my soul. Um, had a great fan. A lot of fans come over here and yeah. made the trip. Appreciate them. Uh, don't 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 get on these young men. I'm gonna take all responsibility. We'll get them ready. We will get ready. We will fight. 
Uh, it'll be different next time. It won't be no 40 point. I'm not saying we're going to win, but we're going to get better and we're going to fight and we're going to find a way. We will see you on January 5th <laughs> against this team. That's our next broadcast. So this uh, is our last one for the year. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy hey, New Year. Coach. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you all for all y'all do. And Absolutely. what you do for my young men, it's about them. It's not been about me. It never has. It's all about these young men. I appreciate what you do for them. All right. Thanks. We'll see you. All right. And the Indians uh, and Lady Indians fall here tonight to Gatlinburg. Our crew here. Uh, we want to thank everybody involved. Our host, Kevin Akers. We want to thank Will King and Lucas Laxton. Show you both right there. Look at them. Where are you, Will? Get it. It's, it's <laughs> He's bullet. got a squat. Get it up a little bit there. You got a squat Lucas. There you Yeah, go. there you go. Now. <laughs> there you go. And uh, Bo Kidd on statistics. And uh, it's Tim Smith saying thanks for joining us. And we do want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we will see you January 5th with the Indians and the Highlanders, the rematch in Oneida. That's our next broadcast. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year from all of us at the IH Sports Network.